Oh, someone just sent me a link, apparently, to pillow lava forming. Oh, and it's from PMEL, NOAA. Uh, PMEL is the Pacific Marine Environmental Laboratory um, with NOAA. I'm going to check that out later. Bridge nav. Can we have another step five zero meters bearing zero one zero, please? Thank you. Yeah, we saw another one of those little slime stars, that purple that we were. I was just Googling about sea stars and the slime stars can shoot streams of mucus at predators. I love ah, it. Yuck. Yeah. Thank you, Isn't Annabelle. Cool? <laughs> yeah. yeah, sorry, nobody wanted that. No, no, <laughs> you're welcome. That's great, that actually reminds me, I was looking at the, uh, oh goodness, what was that, Hipposterid? Um, sea star that we had seen e seen predating the uh, Walteria flamingi. Uh huh. And uh, it turns its stomach inside out and basically like, bloop, like Ooh. pops it out. To eat? To eat. Yeah. Whoa. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. I remember learning that in like intro to marine bio and I was like, what? So weird. Pretty incredible. I kind of want to see one. You know, hagfish slime makes a good egg white substitute. Oh. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. I think so. Yeah. I think you can fry it up. Mm, yum. I don't know if you would, but you could. I don't know who would ever have easier access to hagfish slime than eggs, but you know. <laughs> Fishermen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they're not <laughs> called chicken men. <laughs> <laughs> they're also not called hag men either. <laughs> Maybe they should be. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Maybe they should be. <laughs> that slipped out. I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> I used to fish. <laughs> I hold grudges. <laughs> so judgy of the hagfish men. <laughs> Not only have I never caught a hagfish, I've never heard of anyone catching a hagfish. Except for in trawl nets or something like bycatch, I don't know. Yeah. That's what I was imagining. Mm -hmm. Catching hagfish Ugh. sounds like sounds a diagnosis, just. not a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a hagfish. Yeah, you throw that back immediately. <laughs> just put it right on back. All right, diverge into a slightly more fun question for the kids. Someone said their future young explorer wanted to know what's everybody's favorite type of pizza? <laughs> pizza? Yes. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that it's sausage and green pepper for me. Every oh. time, doesn't matter where I am. That's Roasted what I have to have. and ricotta. Ooh. I have to try that one. My favorite pizza is called the punctuated equilibrium from a place. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, I know, right? That From is a specific. <laughs> super specific. I don't actually know what's on it. The punctuated um, equilibrium? Yeah, it sounds like it a right? history fact. It's, well, <laughs> yeah. Okay, keep going. I'm, I'm yeah, listening. what's on it? You have to tell what's on it now. So I don't know. Oh. I just always oh. get it and it's delicious. But it's like goat cheese, maybe. Red peppers, olives. Mm. The rest, is, the the rest is the question, but it's so good. If you're ever in Portland, Maine. Flat right. <laughs> it's the best pizza. She's like, you don't ask questions, you just bite it. Yeah, just get the picture of the equilibrium. <laughs> Fantastic. Was that the pizza question? Did it I miss was. It? Oh. No, you can still, please, please tell us. 
You missed the punctuated equilibrium, oh, though. Wait, wait, wait. Don't can we get a partial zoom yeah, on this? Yeah, we can get a full-blown zoom on this. Mushroom Ooh. pizza. <gasps> oh. Zoom in on this mushroom pizza. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, man. It's now his favorite you're going to me to get a pizza emoji on here. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about Whoa. the uh, the wow. crust, though. That is beautiful. Look at oh, that. Wow. Um, this might be on our so wish list. So camouflaged. Oh, they oh are wow. Decide quick. Yeah, I'm hoping Chris is it's tuning beautiful. in. It's beautiful. Come wide, please. Oh, man. This is the tube and anemone he wants, Siri and Theria. Yeah. Bridge nav. Yeah, please hold. Can we hold position here, please? Thank you. Okay. We're still going to need to act fast because we got yeah. a cliff wall coming up for Argus. Yeah. Atlanta, sorry. Yeah. We know what I you can. mean. We can let out a bit. Okay. Chris is typing, so oh, okay. hopefully a yeah, few more I seconds. <laughs> Could be a Syrian <laughs> Yeah, I think that's what it is. It's just whether or not this is the one that's on the wish list. Is it partial, uh, possible to get a closer zoom? Yeah, go ahead, Steve. We're looking to see if it has buckled tentacles. Buckled? Buckled. Hmm. Yeah. They look like... <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty oh, in its, its own way. It is. It's like a chrysanthemum. <laughs> the color is so cool. It's very Ursula. Oh, that is such a good comparison. Oh, if we sample this, I'm coming down. <laughs> Did we put the lasers on it? How big was that? I can't remember. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's I a request to try to collect this. Okay, come wide, please. Let's be fast. Okay. <gasps> slurp jar. Slurp. Slurp yeah. jar. Might be too big for the slurp, but we can give it a go. All right. Um, is there a certain one I should put it on? I first? got it on two. Okay. So is this a type you of give it anemone? That? Yeah. What is this? Okay. Uh, this is a cnidarian. Oh, you tube you anemone. Section. Tube anemone. Yeah, stand by. Okay. Please keep an eye on that sonar. I am watching. I'm kind of increasing our delta. Yeah, roger that. Not like 21. Sorry. No, you're good. So this is one of the triangles. Okay, zoom in, please, Steve. Is oh it okay goodness. if it's in pieces? Uh, that is a good question that I don't know the answer to. So we'll just try to get what we can get. Yeah. Okay. Uh, go for it. Let's go 40%, 50%, something like that. I need to turn off this too. Okay. All right. Going to 50%. Okay. Here we go. We're at 50. Whoop. Uh, come Ooh. down in Delta, please. Oh, sorry about that. My jerking you around. I'm coming down. And then yeah, Steven. you don't want to go any higher than that. Okay, Probably 23, do it. 22 is the most. Okay, I'm at 22. Are we able to put the jar? Like the jar? Oh, oh whoa. Ah! whoa. Oh, my God. Thank that you. is so <laughs> Come wide, please, Steve. <sighs> Can we see the slurp canisters in oh. the camera? Yes. <gasps> okay, it's all oh in there. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow. Slurp jar, slurp jar two. That, oh, Just that was cool. Oh, oh that was, that was, that was weird. I was looking that away. Was I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, so let kill. And you can Ooh. rotate the slurp jar. Great job, team, rotate. trying to get come that up on done Delta. quickly all right. while we're yeah. still moving. Yeah, very good job, RV team. That was impressive. Yeah, no, not out of the woods yet. Do I need to go to flush? Lynette, that Double was 066. There we go. Holy moly. <laughs> Delta's 18. <sighs> yeah, keep coming up. Keep it at 20. <laughs> 20 to 25 even is fine. Okay. I hope everybody watching just saw that. Oh, <laughs> Holy. If you're watching, you can also rewind it <laughs> and watch it again. <clears throat> Sorry, I lost you on the camera during all that. Uh, you should have. Okay. <laughs> it gave me some extra scope, and if you had turned around, we would have had a lower delta, and then you would have hit the wall, and would have been bad. Yeah. Great flying, Ashton. All right. Thank you. We are clear of the wall. Yes. Uh, All right. You, you can. Uh, are you running flush right now? Uh, In a one three eight zero six six. Flush. I'm are not you? running anything. Okay. Uh, actually, yeah, hold on to that. It's actually, an I'll, I'll stow this first. Enemy? Should I run the sucker? Do you sucker? need the name? Uh, not yet. I'm going to stow the arm first and then. Okay. And we'll flush while it's stored. Mm -hmm. eh, 
that thing was so satisfying to slurp. <laughs> Someone just said that was oddly satisfying. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's no, like it, what are you doing? Did it tear apart? Oh, God. Why are you down here? Oh, yeah. all right. That was, that was <laughs> just OK. What? I wish we had instant replay. I know. <laughs> I wish I could have enjoyed it. <laughs> I know. It was not. Yeah, you guys were working fast. That was really yeah, great. Yeah, that was great work. We're going to have to catch that on the highlight reel later. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, you can. I hope you flagged that, Start Shelby. flushing. Oh, my Please. God. Okay. Well, those typically don't make highlights. <laughs> okay. My Aww. stomach. They're very That's gnarly. true. Yeah, is gnarly. Um, is there a certain value I should be using to flush? Somewhere between 50 and 100. Okay. Amp that up. Bridge nav. Flushing. Actually, can we hold a move? Um, I'd like to see oh, if we can pick by. up some rocks. Rocks, Raj. Trevor and Ashton, just let me know when, if we're still in like super catch up mode or. If no, we we're, work. we're almost oh, we're there. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I can probably stop flushing now, huh? That's a yep. fish. Hey, just so you know, back row, uh, yeah. jar one had some stuff in it left over from last dive. I guess it didn't get fully cleaned, so I, that's oh, why I skipped over to okay. two. Okay. So please yeah. make a note to get that cleaned before next dive. Great. Okay. Good catch. There's some, some white schmutz. I don't know. It's white oh, yeah. schmutz. To see what we collected last I went in to look at the samples today. There are some boulders in there. That's amazing. <laughs> and you smelt the, the, the beard hat. I smelt <laughs> the fuzzy beard hat. Beard hat. <laughs> Sponge. That's a sentence you never thought you'd say. <laughs> <laughs> what surprised you most about this cruise? Oh, so me saying the sentence, I smelled the beard hat. <laughs> <laughs> Can I unsmell the beard hat? <laughs> Hard no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ooh, All right. Look at, look at the sunset cam. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, wow. Yeah, they that's nice. Better all be out there enjoying that for us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about this little pile to the left of the lasers, right in kind of this zone here? Yeah, Does potentially. Trying not to get, uh, um, sorry, where's my pointer? I don't necessarily want this kind of material that's the sheet flow. I Roger. want more of this angular stuff. Um, which is often too big. Yeah. Um, well, we can try nuzzling in here. And yeah, nestling, maybe this. Maybe this one. Not sure. Let's. Yeah, let's have a, a poke. Ooh. A poke and see. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I don't think this is going to be what we want. It looks too altered. Too altered. Should I move on? Yeah. Okay. Freaks me out every time. Sorry. Sorry, I mean, not your fault. Analog video. <laughs> it's very satisfying to be able to check off some of these wish list items. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's I so exciting when they come up, like, just pop up. We're like, ooh. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Did okay. we hear a name for the purple Ursula thing? Ready for a ship yes, we Maybe did. I'll just go the right way first. Well, we um, don't know a full species name. Yeah, just to the family, Sarianted. And Chris Kelly has given you guys a super shout out, um, ROV pilots and nav Aww. for that um, uh, Anything? sample. Yeah, I'm looking. Here. I'm looking. This all looks too uh, crusted. Thanks. Thanks, Chris Not Kelly. Not quite what we want. Okay, I'll go, I'll go the right way for a bit and then see if we can get something. Okay. I'm just wandering off right now. Steve, if you want a tighter zoom on oh, the yeah. Atlanta cam, I think I'm pretty stable. Roger that. Thanks. Should we assume that slurping it pretty much took it out or? <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm wondering. Probably. We got the specimen sampled. <laughs> it is, won't look like what it looked like on the seafloor. Look at these pillow bombs. Oh, if only you were smaller so we could pick <laughs> you up. What about some of the stuff uh, like just above the lasers chisel. now? Yeah, some of this might be good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Lovely. Maybe. Maybe lovely. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, they're definitely crusty, but they're still got some angles to them, so maybe they'll be good. Um, let's try to pick that one up. Okay. See what we get. Do you want a craft arm view? Sure, please. And do you want a porch light? What the hey? <laughs> porch sure. light. Okay, first one, what do you think? This one right here. Ooh, okay. Get some stills, Diane, please. Yep. Sure it, oh. it huh. doesn't want to come oh. out. <laughs> really? Huh. They're so crusted. It's wow, really that's amazing. It really huh. looks like they're loose, but yeah. no. That one looks like it's like yeah, right on top too. Trevor, can you reach up to these tall ones up here? Uh, I might need to do a little scoot, which is fine. Bonk. Bonk. Hope that was enough. Yeah, just glued yeah. in here. <laughs> I'm starting to think that the gray demo sponges we've been seeing are just encrusting these all together. Uh -huh. It's just a massive demo sponge glue. <laughs> oh, that, oh. that one's moving. Well. Yeah, let's give it a try, see what it looks like. What if I miss first, then grab it? Aha. Okay, zoom in please. Let's start with uh, lasers on it. There we go. Oh, nice. Mm. It's a nice size. Yep. About 15 centimeters, maybe? Mm -hmm. 14? Look at those arm skills. Thank you, Trevor. Great. Okay. You want we this in Bravo? Bravo would be great. Yeah, Thank please. you. Super. And I'm, I remember this time, there's nothing floaty in that Starboard bio box. Nothing hey. floaty. Bravo coming out. We did start the dive. Yeah, that's why I can remember. Um, wondering if we can get one more here for the microbiology. What is, is our gonna fit? What is our luck? Here's there's hope. two things that we can stow. Oh, oh, oh yeah, that'll go. Yeah, yeah, that'll go. Boop. <laughs> Sample taken. Bravo. Nice. Boop, boop. Should I leave Thank the you. box open for a moment? Or are you doing uh, another? Let's close it just in case. Yeah, I think that's Easy the only uh, geology sample. We might take a microbiology. Oh, Roger that. If there's another one that's loose here. This was the zone, so I'll poke around in here first. Can you push in a little bit there, Steve? Is there something over here? No. What about this one? Nope. This one? Nope. Eh. Did you try the one straight in front of you? Nope. How? <laughs> <laughs> that looks like... I don't understand. So? Can we zoom wide and see if yeah, there's maybe any, anything else to our right or left? I'm drifting towards this cliff a little bit, but I'm yeah, just Raj. watching my delta. <laughs> eh. Are you loose? Nope. Boop. Nope. Nope. Oh, now I'm wedged. That's neat. That was. That was fun. All right. Maybe um, let's try hopping up and see if there's any other little piles here or nearby. Roger that. It's like a 
interesting little sponge. Oh in there. boy! Yeah, I do. I would love to try taking a rock. Okay. <laughs> mm, that's that pretty sounds amazing. Pretty sponges. Oh, yeah. Let me know if you, you see a spot for it. It's about for us to try stopping. Okay. It's Any, pretty. Anyone there? Bouldery over here. Yeah, these are. Yeah, they're large. Not really sampleable. Do you want a DPL reset? Uh, yes, please. Oh, we got one of those Thank sea you. stars How about over here? chomping away. Off to the left? Yeah. That looks smoother. What do you think, Beth? Um, See yeah, some microbiology maybe. action in there? Maybe. Slightly different rocks than what we were just looking at. Yeah, this is a little different, isn't it? There's one kind of angular one. Well, I don't necessarily need angular for the oh, microbiology. Okay. I want crusty. And pillow basalts are fun uh, <laughs> because they often have glass in them, too. So that's nice. something I'm interested in. Oh, but crazy. This is There's a slightly here? different type of rock. Uh, type here. Okay. Yeah. If hop we back could get over to the right. yeah, hop back over to the right to get back on those pillows and see if um, we can find a small piece. Ugh, sorry, I'm playing with lights. Yeah. yeah. Maybe up in here. I wonder if any of these are loose and small enough. Looks like there's a big sponge or coral in front of you. Oh yeah, it's up to the left there, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I'm not loving any of that spot. Yeah, I wish that were loose. That looks perfect, but <laughs> wanna try it? Yeah, I feel like it's going to be attached, but maybe too. Maybe maybe this is our lucky day. We could push it into that cave just for fun. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies, that's not how you park. What is that up in the upper left? Corner? I don't know. Huh. It's maybe a type of Okay, just gorgia. hold on a moment. Here we go. Ryan says crazy corded. Oh, that's a chrysogorgid. Okay. Yeah, it's huh. some one of that's these a kinds. It's a octocoral. Oh, can you come down to Delta? Yeah, on. coming down. Oh, Ryan, you might have been looking at this. I think we were talking about this. I'm not sure if that's a Is that what we think it is? All right, I'm at 14. Thank you. Yeah. Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> hard no. Hard no. Hard no. <laughs> Literally a hard no. <laughs> well played. Uh, okay. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's any other candidates right in this little clutch. Man, these are like welded together. Yep. Not budging. I like a little micro cave though, that's pretty cool. Come on, little loose pillow basalt, where we, are you? We just need one good one. How about this one underneath the manip right now? Right, right, right there. Right here? Is that what you're looking at? Yeah. Let's give it a try. No, I'm not holding my breath on that one. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a hard now. <laughs> <laughs> Rats. Well, we can keep scanning, no problem. Yep. Yep. 
I'm going to come off bottom a little bit here just okay. to see if we can get a higher yep. perspective. Ooh, what sense. about that one? Type of rosette. Underneath the manip here. right now. I'm not sure which one you were referring to, but if you think there's something loose, <laughs> just <All right>. try. <laughs> we will give it a try. Oh, I see what you're going yeah, for. Yeah, I think I know you're Kind of centering up right now. Yep. I don't know. Doesn't could look great. could be our winner. All right, come down on Delta, please. Coming down. Oops, bonk. Don't bonk. What are you doing, Trev? No. Okay. No, there's uh, another. If you back up and look down to the left. Okay. We just not very far. It's just like out of frame. Okay. There's something down there that caught my eye. This little, these little tiny ones. I'm not sure. Might have just been shadow making them look loose. Just in the zone the lasers are in? Yeah, in that pocket. Yeah. It looked like there might have been something. Where's your rock hammer when you need it? Yeah, hammer yeah, right. and chisel. <laughs> I feel like we've been here before. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, 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 we're looking at it. It doesn't look like we can pick it up. I feel like we've been here before. Right behind the manip, you can't see it. Right here is something that looked loose. Negatory. Wow. We, p we already picked up the only one on this whole surface. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm falling off here. Yeah, the only rock on this whole rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this hill is made of two rocks. The one we sampled and the rest and of the it. And the rest of it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Incredible. All right, we'll give this another couple minutes, see if we can find anything. Otherwise, we'll sure. put in a ship's move and keep going. I'm going to go down slope a little bit. I'm going to back up. Back that herc up. What about in this zone here? This looks pretty nice. Could be some winners down here. There's no way to know if I've been here before or not. Oh, someone just checked in from I'm South Africa. Hello. I'm pretty sure you're just, I don't know, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not seeing anything right in here. What about front and center below the lasers? The diamond shaped one. Yeah, it's a bit more angular than what I'm looking for. We're okay. looking for something that looks really crusty and more like crusty. a pillow basalt. Yeah. A right. rounded, something rounded. I wonder if any of these. Those little guys, yeah. Try, I could totally try one of the little guys. That part was of it was loose, but oh, oh, come on! <laughs> How? All right, this part of the mountain just doesn't want to give up its secrets to us. I guess not. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with saying we put in a valiant try, but we'll keep going. Roger that. One more try here for all the marbles. Uh, what? How about that? Is that going to work? 
or is that too yeah. angular? Um, it's hard for me to tell. Can we try to pick it up and get Why don't we try to pick it up? I'm going to do a reposition zoom. first. Okay. Oh, man. Okay. All right. I practiced all morning for this moment, guys. <laughs> Ash is going to take this sample. I'll Great. put it in the oh, box. Go, go Ash and go. Close to the Zeus. Okay. But you, if you grab it up and bring it to the towards the porch, then we'll go from there. I am going to be really proud if I can just pick it up. Oh yeah, you got, got this. It. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to tip up and show you a little more arm. The one with the lasers on it, right? The one underneath the jaws now, the tips of the jaws. This. That oh, guy. the big guy? This one. This guy, right? Okay. Thank you. Ah. Let me poke it. Yeah, okay. that's the loose one. Oh, I poked it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nope, sorry. <laughs> all right, all right. Take your time. Stay tuned. Oh, grip block is on. Still on. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay. Steven, so do you mind putting on that camera yeah. trail of Ashton? Put it in grip lock okay. and then double check your grip lock actually took. Okay. Oh. Try, to, try to get a bit more of a deep grab on it. Just yeah. the one to the left. Which one would you prefer, Beth? Right oh, or wow. left? <laughs> Oh man, the swaying boat the motion. <laughs> oh, 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 okay, okay. So close. You got it. Yeah. I know. I, I, I got this, guys. I got this. There you go. There you go. Looks good. Okay. It's a great time for grip lock. I grip locked it. Woo! Nice one. Woo -hoo -hoo. Yeah. 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 Oh, can I do the show it off thing? Do you have <laughs> time? time? Yeah. yeah. You gotta you spin it for right. us. Oh, oh, thank you, Steve. Awesome. There it is. Yeah. Twirl. Good work. And for nine ninety nine, <laughs> it does have that extra rock glimmer. <laughs> if yeah. we could pause it, well, I'd like turn it, pause it, turn it. Yeah. yeah. So we can get some good photos. Oh thank yeah. You, Ashton. Thank you. This is great. Perfect. Yeah. Ooh. It needs to be still for a sixtieth of a second. <laughs> <laughs> Wet Lab says good job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, lounge scientists. All right. Yeah. Uh, All this right. is going to go in the forward bio box. Okay. Okay. Come wide, please. And we'll tag out here. And I'll All show right. you the, the considerations for the forward bio box. Okay. There's some real gotchas on this one. So I am. High consequence gotchas. <laughs> okay. Like punching the camera in the face with as, the new rock. As an example, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, great job. Okay, <gasps> uh, you can open the forward bio box, please. Oops, this is not indexed. Oh, it was. It was. This is in the super long hold index mode. Oh, God, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's gotten me many times before. It's, it's a real weird one. Anyway, uh, okay. okay. I'm halted now, so you can come on out. So the key here is even when you think you're clear, these jaws open so much that they will hit the camera. Oh. So I'm going to put this in Lambda just for fun. But when I'm opening the jaws here, I won't even pretend to try to feather them. I'll always turn them this way. So okay. if they get away from me, they don't stick into the camera lens. Brilliant. So you see this one, if I let it go completely, they open this way. But if I'm opening them this way and I let it go, yeah. wham, wow. right into the thing. And that is... Yeah, that's a very serious concern. Anyway, sample taken, Lambda. Great. We're going to want to collect a Niskin, too, please. Roger that. Okay, please close the box. Closing. And if we could maybe come off bottom by like a meter or so, just so we get rid of away from the sediment we disturbed. Roger that. That would be great. Do you have porch light? Do you need it? Porch light is on, I think. And if not, it's fine where it is. Okay. Okay, I think the box is probably closed. Good. I'm going to come so. off the bottom now. Okay. Porch light is on. So 2.1 meters was our altitude when we were on bottom. Yep. So okay. we're going to try to get up about uh, three or four. Yeah. 
And can we switch over to Niskin Cam? That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Although I'll do it for now. Okay, uh, camera one, we're at about three and a half meters now. Or not camera one, Niskin one. What's it called? What am I doing? <laughs> Niskin one. <laughs> yeah. For those wondering, if you're looking at satellite yeah. feed three, that um, is what we are referring to when we say Niskins. They help us collect uh, water samples. Uh, for eDNA okay. in particular for this expedition, which stands for nice. environmental DNA. Okay, we're all sampled up. All nice. Right. Just when we were about to give up hope. Yeah, <laughs> that was <laughs> funny. One more, one more <laughs> push, right? And then we find two rocks. What? I know, overwhelming. <laughs> I don't understand. Anyway, cool. So Lynette, that is 069 for the Niskin, and okay. I see that you've gotten the, the two rocks, so thank you. Yes, got it. All right, let's get back into a few questions here, because I know it was kind of intense. We were trying to find some rocks. Are we ready to start moving now? <laughs> yes, we can okay. go ahead and put let's a start moving. Okay. For Lynette, I think she's got to do bridge now. Bridge now. Yeah. <laughs> Can we move five zero meters bearing zero one zero, please? Thank you. All right. Someone is wondering, have we ever encountered any animals that are close to or bigger than the size of Hercules while on the ocean floor? I think someone told me that there were a sponge or two that was just as big or tall. Yeah, well, uh, our previous sure. expedition in Papahanamoa Kuakea, we commonly saw polyopagon sponges that could be a meter or larger in diameter. They're really, really fantastically huge. I've also seen some Christmas tree corals that were much, much taller than mm. Hercules. What's a Christmas tree coral? That's, uh, that's a name I know it by, cool. but okay. they're... They have a lot of branches. <laughs> right on. I remember them being dark colored, like almost Yeah, and they kind of spiral, I think, a little bit. Can no? I give you another DBL reset? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, no, the yeah, other. I think these might be shallow water. Oh, yeah, those might be shallow water. I and think those are deep water. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that might have been off of California and not as deep water. Herc has also seen a sperm whale. That's quite a bit bigger. Quite. <laughs> All right. Lynette, what's our distance away point to? Um, I think about 100 meters. All right. Yeah, Might make it there before we change over shifts. About 120. Oh, they're actually, they might be white. I'm trying to remember the color, but they were the biggest corals I've ever seen. Mm. When you Google deep, uh, or Christmas tree corals, you get these little, like, spirally things, but I think that they're actually worms. So, oh, oh yeah. I think Maybe they're pulling up Christmas tree worms. Yeah. That, that is a thing. Yeah. So I think you're totally right, Steve. I think my Google is failing yeah. me. Maybe that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> the Oracle has failed us. <laughs> <laughs> has Hercules ever been attacked by oceanic fauna? I think Trevor mentioned something maybe latched on here or there. Yeah. To the to the arm maybe here i got it i'll tell a different story okay there's just enough stories to go around uh one time on recovery i think this was last year we saw some white tips circling around you know exploring what's happening as the vehicles were on the surface and there's a there's conflicting memories of what people <laughs> saw but some say that they saw the I white tip take a chomp at one of the footballs yeah i saw it <laughs> 
Yeah. Some yeah, people find say. We have a witness but, uh, in the control yeah. van. Yeah, couldn't find Some any people. tooth marks, but uh, I would totally believe it. <laughs> I couldn't pass it off as fact. I couldn't see it, so. But you can. Facts. Facts. <laughs> I wonder if we'll catch that sunset. Maybe the tail end, like, right. <laughs> I think you got it, man. I mean, uh, from outside. <laughs> oh. With our, with our actual eyes. 14 eyes. minutes till oh, end of our like watch. Feel its warmth. <laughs> the other watch is going to milk it. So <laughs> can't blame them. I could not believe how gluey these rocks are. I know. They just look like they're all piled up here. You could pick whichever one you want. But it's an illusion. Do you know why they're stuck together? Like, what sticks them together? It's probably this encrusting uh, ferromanganese crust. So they come down all broken up like that, sit there, and then get encrusted, and that's what glues them together? That's that's my working hypothesis. Cool. That's hmm. fascinating. And that. Or it's the demo sponges. <laughs> <laughs> well, this encrusting takes a really long time, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. So that means these rocks have not moved in a really ridiculously long time. Yep. Probably. Trevor, how's current? Just it's checking in. It's almost nothing. Almost There's nothing. You can see a little bit of marine snow drifting yeah. by. That's it. But I'm, I'm dead stick right now. Oh, got pulled by Atlanta. Bad Ooh. example. But, uh, yeah. Dead stick, not much going on. It's really clear water for having no current. Yeah. Like usually I would think that high higher currents would mean like clearer water and vice versa. Well, not I around here because of all of the coral debris that's up on uh, these seamounts and this and like the coral and debris in, in these little pockets we're looking at. So it'll get picked up and carried. Oh cool. Whereas here since there's not much current, there's not a lot of that disturbance. That makes sense. Thanks for explaining that. What's on the stalk of this crinoid? A little white wispy. Can you zoom in, please, Steve? Some kind of hydroid? Oh. Your little hydroid. We hydroid. Cool. Yeah, that is little. Walk in the tightrope. <laughs> <laughs> gives you a good look at the texture on the rock, too. Yeah. I'm fascinated by the colorful things, though. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I can't help it. Oh, first time viewer, thanks for joining joining us. Don't know where you found us, but glad you did. Um, just wondering what the see. max depth of the ROV is. Uh, Hercus 4000? That's correct. Not Atlanta that we is 6,000 meter rated. Mm. Oh, wow. My rating's deeper than your rating. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up one rock. <laughs> 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 Ready. Okay, I'm leaving this Simple. watch now. <laughs> I like it. I like the confidence. I do great. too. <laughs> yeah, so for anybody joining us new, uh, we are diving on Solidae Seamount, which is in the far northwestern end of the Papahanaumoa Kuakea Marine National Monument. Um, we just got back into the monument today after being uh, needing to flee some bad weather and uh, do some work outside the monument for a few days. Um, we are on a western ridge of the seamount. Um, Lynette, do you mind 
Zooming out high pack. Steven, yeah. can we borrow the sunset view for just a moment? Uh, sure. Um, so when you look at Solar Day Seamount, there's this flange coming off on the western side, a really steep ridge. We're traversing along that from about 2,000 meters up to about 1,300, hopefully, by the end of this dive. Um, it's about a three-kilometer transect, so we've still got a ways to go. Um, this is just the first shift of the dive. We'll be down here for another eight. Uh, we'll probably be down on the seafloor for another 16 hours before we come back up. Um, yeah. Thanks for joining. I believe that's a type of heterorate sponge there in the middle. You want to have a look at it? I can take a peeky peek. Zoom in on the sponge, please. Check on this one. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Okay. Can I call in another ship move? Yes. Sure. Bridge nav. Oh, look at that Ooh. anemone. Oh. Ooh. That's huge. Colors very stark, too. Can we have another step too. five zero meters bearing due north? Thank you. That is a, does he still call it a hold fast with an anemone? It's a good question. I don't know. Let's say yes. It's Whatever a very is large hold fast. Is large. Yeah. Is that part of the anemone itself? Yes. Yeah. North, you say. Well, why don't I head that way instead of wherever I'm going? Let's go fast for a moment. Steven, you can oh, put the sunset view back on if you want. Because it's lovely. It's gone a bit blue. Is this live right now? It is live right now, happening yeah. in real time. You are exploring the seafloor with us. I mean, unless they're watching this days later. That's on true. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Well, this was 27 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> How long are the dives available full length on YouTube? That's a good question. I don't know. I think no it's something like. You can go for 48 hours. You can like access the live video. Right. Quote, quote, I'm doing air quotes. Uh, live <laughs> video, and then eventually the full dive does get uploaded to a playlist. But the live video comes not part of it. Yeah, I understand. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Dramatic. <laughs> Look at you scaling that mountain. I know. Climbing up the walls. Oh, Beth got a ferromanganese <laughs> question for you. Okay. Ooh, overhang. Um, somebody's wondering, does Ooh, the nice. ferromanganese uh, rise up from within the volcanic rock to form the crust, or is it deposited on the surface of the volcanic rock from elsewhere? Beautiful. The ferromanganese crusts are precipitated uh, from ions out of the water. Oh, that was fun. Um, they're, if they were forming in a sedimentary environment, you might also have some... Uh, poor water derived metals, but that's not the case here. And as far as we can tell, there's no evidence of flow, uh, mm -hmm. hydrothermal fluid moving through this mountain to bring up metals. So by and large, it's precipitation out of the water column and it happens very slowly. Cool, thank you. Mm. Very dramatic, mm -hmm. <laughs> huge pillows. Whoa. Huh. Wow. Oh, well, terrain's getting real fun now. Yeah, it is. Wow. Wild.
lot of hollow pillows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're watching feed three, you might see it get a little crowded. We are about to switch watches. Uh, the eight to 12 folks are coming in. So just bear with us. Hello.
Aloha ahe ahe kako. Can you folks hear me? We can hear you. Yes. All right. The 8212 watch is here, I believe. We're all here. Looks like it. Yep. Awesome. I need to grab out my journal so I can remember that question that was sent in by the crowd last night to start off our watch. Uh. I remember now. It, it was a, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Okay, I'll get us started. My name is Malanai. I am a science communication fellow in Hawaii, and I am the I am the Kumuike or Mea Haimololelo. And when I was small, I wanted to grow up to be a beautiful performer like my aunties. That's all I thought <laughs> about. I didn't you really. Just wanted to perform. I just wanted to be a be beautiful dancer like them. Okay, Ryan, your turn. All right. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryan Gasparo. I'm a graduate student and biologist at Temple University in Philadelphia. Um, and when I... Uh, I am up. in Hawaiian, my role would be the Kanaka Epikima. Epikema. Epikema. Another move? And... Uh, when I was a kid, I used to say I wanted to be an oceanographer, uh, and then they were just going due north in small steps. About a so. hundred different things in between, no, but sir. I circled back. Awesome, thank you, Ryan. Shall we, Dwight? Sure. My name is Dwight Coleman. I'm a marine geologist. And the expedition leader on this leg, and I am from Rhode Island. And I think when I was a kid, I, I kind of was fascinated by outer space. I, I'd say I wanted to be an astronaut. So there's something similar about that, being an aquanaut. Yeah, explorer. Why not? Awesome. Thank you. You are the um, Alakai, and you are a Kanaka Epikema and Akiakamai. Mahalo. Uh, Fiona? Hello, everybody. I'm Fiona. I'm the ocean science intern here at Nautilus. When I was, yo when I was younger, I thought I wanted to be an ophthalmologist, but now I kind of veered off from that and looking more towards uh, marine biology, specifically coral reef ecology. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. You are a haumana and a and you're training to become a Kanaka Epikema and Akiakamai. When you're, um, anyone in the front row ready to go? Sure. Uh, I'm sitting on the right. My name is Katachi. I'm a navigator um, and I'm a graduate student at the University of Rhode Island. When I was five, I think um, I wanted to be a scientist. Mm. And you are the Ho'okele. Mahalo, Kotachi. Mahalo. Paul or Dan or Jeff? You guys ready oh, to... Dan, oh, Dan wasn't on SPL. He just had a nice answer, but no one oh, could hear it. Oh, wow. 
I'll try that again. I'm Dan. I'm sitting to uh, Katachi's left in the Hercules operations chair. Um, when I was a young wee lad, I used to go to Scripps Aquarium with my parents, and um, I thought it would be really cool to be a marine biologist. But then I figured out that was a lot of work, so <laughs> I'm an ROV pilot instead. Is being an ROV pilot not a lot of work? <laughs> oh, that's easy. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Dan just enjoys the work. I do mm -hmm. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you, Dan. You are a uh, Pailaka Mokuru'u and a Mokuru'ukia Awaya. I can go next. I'm uh, here on the left of the front row. My name is Paul. I'm the Argus pilot. And uh, when I was four, I don't think I totally understood how this question worked because I wanted to grow up to become a train. <laughs> <laughs> Any day now. It's impressive you remember that. <laughs> Do you still want to be a train? <laughs> <laughs> Some days I think about it, you know. Like I think my family didn't let me live that one down for a while. <laughs> Looks like a branching chrysogorget here. Branching chrysidoria. Just below it, a little bubblegum coral recruit. sitting in the shadows to the left. And uh, I think the first thing that I remember wanting to be was a professional musician or playing music for a living. And that morphed into being a recording engineer, which morphed into being a video engineer, so. Awesome. Thank you, Jeff. You are the uh, Kanaka Pa'ibikyo. Yeah. Uh, just letting everyone know we're at waypoint two. Um, so if we want to hang around and sample, we can, or I can call in the next ship move. Wait, do we want to keep moving? Oh, sorry. I'm like back here reading about rocks. <laughs> 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 sorry. <laughs> yes, please keep moving. Where keep moving? We? we don't want anything from Waypoint 2? They, they already got some good collections uh, here. Roger. Yep. Yeah, Val is uh, cutting a lot of the rocks open and posting some of the pictures to the geology chat. And uh, I was just catching up on some of the comments in there about the types of rocks that, we're s that we've been collecting. It's pretty interesting so far. They're not all just dark black basalts. There's a lot of uh, different types of rocks, actually. Nice. Dan, do you want moves in increments of 40? OK. Bridge, this is Nav. Can we get a move of 40 meters at bearing 037, please? Quite a bit different community composition so far on this seamount than anything we've seen thus far. A little bit more sparse 
an ecological community. Um, still seeing a good diversity of corals. We're seeing um, bamboo corals, bubblegum corals, some of the usual suspects, chrysogorgid corals. Um, but yeah, the density is quite a bit lower. And a lot of these yellow stock stocked crinoids we think are hyocrinids. Look like palm trees. Yeah, right. Yes, apparently the previous watch was in art mode. Do we have the dive plan? No. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Dwight, do you mind um, if you have a sec catching up us and the crowd with what we're doing, where we're at, uh, our goals for this dive. Sure. I'm glad you asked. We are on Soliday Seamount right now. So <clears throat> we transited uh, earlier today back inside the uh, Papahanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. So we're inside the expansion zone of that monument. And uh, we are on a seamount near the northern border of the monument called Soliday Seamount. Uh, we started this dive a couple of hours ago and went down to a depth of about 2,000 meters on the southern flank of the seamount and we're transiting up, a, up and along a ridge that sticks up sort of proud of the surrounding seafloor. And we'll transit this ridge for about three kilometers. So we've just passed waypoint two, which was only about I think uh, 500 meters or so into the into the transect, so we still have a long ways to go. Uh, we're rising up now to a depth of about 1,750 meters. Um, we are on the lookout for uh, different rock samples to collect that will help us characterize the geology of the seamount here, how it was formed, the volcanic origin of it, the age of it. Uh, the the details around the different <coughs> stru geological structures that make up the the side of the seamount, um, and we're also looking for ferromanganese crusts and manganese nodules along the way here too, which are basically altered rocks from uh, exposure to um, different chemicals in the seawater, uh, and those crusts are could potentially be. E uh, economically significant. We're really just trying to characterize the, the basic sort of fundamentals of the nature of these crusts out here. Um, and in addition to that, Ryan, we're on the lookout for biological diversity, really, right? That's right. Sponges, corals, other invertebrates. Uh, seems a little sparse in this area compared to other ridges we've been on. Yeah, a little bit. Some interesting looking rocks, though. This glass sponge at the bottom of the screen is a Walteria glass sponge, the sort of hairy morphology we've been seeing a lot of. Yeah. Did you copy that? We have a scientist on board, who uh, Beth Orcutt, who's interested in studying uh, 
microbes, the microbiology of, of the ferromanganese crusts, uh, basically microorganisms that may live within these crusts and their relationship to the um, mineral makeup of the crusts themselves and the evolution of how they were formed. And we've already collected one sample for her on this dive and uh, we'll be collecting some more. And um, this has never been studied before, this area. So this is for the first time human eyes really have laid sight on this seamount, which is pretty cool. Thank you. Are we ready for the world's questions? <laughs> Bring them on. OK. Uh, yeah. What is everyone's favorite joke or pun related to their field of work? Oh, man. <laughs> That's not related to the story I was told about this <laughs> magnificent exploration we're doing. <laughs> It's okay. There's a lot of, oh. Can't spell lover without ROV. <laughs> Katachi, that's mine. You took that from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have to give credit to Ryan. He <coughs> came up with that. Yeah, oh. yeah. Sorry, is someone going to say something? Go for it, yeah. Do the scientists feel they collected enough supporting evidence from the recent dives outside the monument to have the protection area of the monument extended to cover these dive sites? So That's a great question. Pretty loaded question. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would say uh, we certainly saw wide diversity of marine life so whether that's worthy of expansion or not it's sort of a monument uh, decision or discussion um, I think we did collect enough evidence to adequately characterize that part of the features that we were studying to you know help decision makers and managers you know um, Make, make some more decisions related to that, but I'm not sure that we have enough to, to we, prove or disprove that get a quick it zoom should on this be expanded. Star? Thanks. The purpose for the dives outside of the monument weren't really for that reason, that we weren't mm. trying to uh, find things to tell us whether or not it should be expanded farther, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the goals were really scientific just to look at um, biological diversity and uh, connectivity and really do, do the uh, geology work to understand the origin of this ridge. Yeah, so we're looking at a slime star here. This is uh, in the family Terraster Terasteridae. Um, we've seen a couple of these so far. We can really get a nice look at their um, tube feet on the end of each of their arms here. That's think, a great look, thanks. I think we saw one similar on the previous watch. Um, yeah. And Chris, uh, they decided not to collect it. Yeah. Right? Another move? All right. I've got a uh, geology question for you, Dwight. Uh-oh. Uh -huh. No, no, it's a very, uh, <laughs> very, all my geology questions are going to be hopefully very easy. But uh, Rich, this is Nev. You mentioned that Val is cutting these rocks open and seeing that they're all different kinds. But I mean, from my novice perspective, we get 40 meters at bearing all, uh, 040, look please. similar yeah. down here. So is it? pretty immediately obvious Thank once you. she slices them open what they are or is there further yeah. investigation after that well you, you can tell a lot just by the i guess what we call the texture of the rock you can see different um mineral you can basically see the mineralogy of the rock makeup and uh 
just by looking at the mineralogy or the uh, the nature of the uh, texture of the rock it tells you a lot about its origin so uh, a lot of them that she's been cutting open have um, large crystals in them mm -hmm. so uh, the, or they might have um, other elements that are um, a different type of volcanic rock so lavas erupt out of a volcano and they crystallize or quench kind of quickly and form fine-grained basaltic rocks but we also have volcanic ash and and uh, volcanic debris that um, solidifies into different types of rock and you know on the seafloor looking at these rocks they might all look the same but once you cut one open you can actually say hey this this has some fragments of of um, ash in it for example or a different type of chemical makeup from the normal lavas we'd expect um, so it's pretty interesting We'll share some of those photos for everyone on board at some point and you can see what she's been looking at. Copy that. Are we just stretched out? Oh, down. Looks like quite a few fan corals down on that rock. Possibly Paracolytrophora in the Primnoidae family that we've seen quite a few of. Yeah, some really large ones there. And they like to settle on the sides of large rocks like this because it doesn't accumulate sediment and so um, it's not clogging them up. I'll see yellow Acanthogorgia on there, so I think that's. From what I've seen, maybe the first time we've seen that on this dive. Are we able to come in a little bit tighter on sort of this region here? Maybe take a look at the base of that white coral and that yellow coral? You'll see how we're not far from the uh, bottom here. Yeah. Oh, wow. What type of corals did you say these were again, yeah, Ryan? These are Paracalyptrophora, I believe. Some really, really large ones here, possibly amongst the largest ones we've seen. And there's some of those basket stars um, occupying some of the dead portions near the top. Really, really. Sorry, one more time. Hi. Nav, uh, bridge, this is Nav. Am I uh, clear to come up a meter or two yet, Dan? Can we move 20 meters at bearing 135, please? There was a question about where is the volcano that produced these rocks, and I believe it, this is it. The, this volcano is, we're looking at it, yeah? Yeah, the, I mean, this is the side of a volcano for sure, but I guess maybe the question is better where where on, where on Earth's surface was was this volcano when it formed, <laughs> which was not where it is today. So it was thousands of miles south of here, we think, um, over a different hotspot, not even the Hawaiian hotspot. So 
um, hot spots are these uh, regions in in the uh, Earth's sort of uh, lithosphere and um, uh, crust that rise up from deep within the Earth, and they are very uh, soft rock material that rises up to the surface, very hot and buoyant rock. And when it reaches the surface, it, er it um, erupts as lavas. And so the Hawaiian hotspot is really, I think, uh, one of the largest on Earth. And it's been erupting for a very long time. And you can trace its, um, a trace a lot of seamount origins to the Hawaiian hotspot because of plate tectonics. The Pacific plate moves over the hotspot and the hotspot stays stationary in kind of a um, Earth reference frame. And so as the Pacific Bridge, this plate moves over the hotspot, the seamount, the uh, volcanoes get older and older as, and as they move away from the hotspot. So right now the zero, meters zero south, age please. volcano is at um, Mauna Loa on the Big Island, and that's erupting now. And, uh, and that's... Um, uh, very young, but um, some of the Hawaiian Ridge seamounts, like where Midway Island is, for example, is I can't remember exactly uh, twenty or twenty or thirty million million years old. So that was over the Hawaiian hotspot back then, and it's moved moved that far away in those thirty million years or whatever. So we think that the origin of this ridge is actually perhaps the Marquesas hotspot, which is um, down in towards the South Pacific. And we think they're about 80 to 100 million year old volcanoes. And that Marquesas hotspot still active? I believe it is, yes. Yep. Not, as, not nearly as large as the Hawaiian hotspot though, so it's not producing big volcanic islands. I think they're... Uh... Is Hawaii itself moving with respect to Earth then? Is Hawaii, yes, absolutely. About a couple centimeters a year. <laughs> Which you can actually measure. Wow. We do put uh, GPS stations on some of these islands and measure their motion over decades. Thank you. you. That was an amazing answer. Even my <laughs> mind was like blown away. I had a couple of jaw dropping moments. <laughs> yeah, the Marquesas Islands in French Polynesia were erupted from the Marquesas hotspot. Yeah. But one of the things that we're studying is trying to actually determine the origin. So we don't really know. That's sort of a guess right now. There are some other uh, hotspots um, or mantle plumes in, the, in that part of the Pacific that could be the origin for these. I see. We're looking at some white stylosterid corals here. Not positive on the ID on this yellow coral. Sort of an interesting branching morphology here. Looks like a black coral, maybe. That's all I got. Yep, that's a black coral. Um, we're used to seeing them more reddish orange, so this one, a little bit different col color morph. That's a great look, thanks. We're seeing a lot of this gray encrusting demo sponge that, on this dive as well that we haven't seen elsewhere. So we keep seeing things every dive um, that indicate that there's just a lot of turnover between these different seamount environments and that each one of them is sort of a, a unique place. Even at similar depths as one another.
Really, really wanted to come around that rock, but uh, we just don't have the leash. Well, it's fun, even though the uh, Atalanta Zeus cam can't see anything, the uh, rear cam still has her in view. Yeah, so there's in the rocks there. As he's done with this one, we can do the 20 meters, 135. Here's a question. Um, have you guys ever found a completely new species Bridge, of this is aquatic life before? Yeah, we see uh, new species uh, quite often. Can we and, please have uh, 20 meters at bearing 135? A lot of times when you see us collecting something, it's because um, one of us or potentially a scientist ashore thinks that um, that collection or that organism Keep your, uh, uh, might be a new species or might help oh. us refine um, some of the Hold different taxonomic groups with the that yeah. we're studying, like corals and uh, sea stars, sponges, what have you. So yeah, lots of new species down here, and hopefully lots of new species um, as a result of this expedition. Oh. Thank you, Ryan. He can uh, increase his speed too, he's like barely. Come faster, George, faster, faster. <laughs> One example of that, we're getting a chat from Asako, one of our scientists ashore, noting that yeah, um, just the sponge we collected yesterday is likely a new species. Trying to get Argus on the uh, east side of Herc there, George. Did we already mention the sea star that we gathered the other day? Yeah, that's another good example of something that's going to help either be a new species or help refine that, that family of sea stars that we collected one of. Thank you. Thanks, George. You mean that, uh, those big white sponges? Is that the one that's potentially new? Yeah, we think that's a, a new species. Which one we're looking at? No, no, oh, uh, yesterday. The one from yesterday. Waiting for the ship to move, guys. Here. We're trying to get uh, Argus on the east side of us. Look at, look at the cliff. And for those of you that have been watching for a little bit of this dive, we um, took a slurp sample of a Serianthid anemone earlier, and that also we think is a new species. Yeah. so it's a little faster on the top of the race there. So it's taking longer to drag it over there. Is Argus faster to respond to ship moves because it's heavier? I think so, yeah. Atlanta kites in the breeze. Yeah. Hang on. I'm going to try something for a minute here. Look like a small eel just floated by in the water column. I was going to see blue water for just a second. I'm going to sure. drag Atlanta over where I want it. 
<laughs> we do have a uh, wrap in the tether. Just yeah, I know. When collecting a new species, um, do we wait to see two of them before collecting, or just if we see it, we got to take that chance? Yeah, it really depends. Where possible, we try and take a partial sample of an organism so that uh, it. <laughs> when we saw that new glass sponge species yesterday, we, um, we slurped just a piece off of the side of its body wall. Um, same with a potentially new species of black coral that we sampled yesterday. Um, but, um, yeah, we just sort of do it opportunistically. So it, it really depends. Thank you. If you can't get the ship to move Atlanta, just drag it. <laughs> <laughs> That seemed to work. <laughs> okay, I'll come back up to the top so you can come up a few meters. Let me come up first. Yeah. Okay, 20 meters east, please. Thank Bridge, you. this is enough. Let's do 40, 40 meters east. Looks like a fallen sponge or... Yeah, some sponge that may have traveled from somewhere else. Few little Chrysogorget octocorals as well. Should be able to look straight down, Paul. It should be right under you. Uh, and if you want, you can spin around to take the tether rib out. But you're going to be on the east side here shortly. So. Once you believe you found a new species, um, can you talk a little bit about the process um, that follows that? Um, Naming, classification, uh, whether it be journal work well, or... I didn't hear what he said there. Sure. Um, so... Yeah. No, he can uh, book it to the east there. It's not something I've you done myself. You can maintain... Yep. I'm sorry. Um, now we're back in the box. Almost. Yeah, so I've never described a species myself, but um, from what I've gathered... I'm going to take out the wrap. What's that? I'm going to do a spin and take out the wrap, though. No, I'll just don't worry about it. Right. Okay. I'm not in a place where I want to spin. I'll tangle myself up. What was the last ship move, Katachi? Uh, 20 meters east. Okay. 40 meters east. Get uh, Argus off the cliff there. Good enough. Continue on our original. What are the spider webs there? Yeah, can we get a zoom on one of those? Sure. Okay, push in a bit, Jeff. I think we saw some of this the other day and weren't really sure what we were looking at. Saw some of this on the last. Uh, yeah. Turn in the porch light on. Uh, last expedition and we didn't know what it was there. Huh. Yeah, we saw some of this before. Not sure if that's sort of triangular shaped by reproductive byproduct from some other organism or egg almost, case yeah. yeah something like that or it almost looks like a huh. bryozoan but a little too opaque I don't think it is a bryozoan um, yeah interesting don't know
That's a sea urchin that we saw above there too? Yes. Lots of little hydroids encrusting this rock as well, the little yellow things. Hydroids. like some nice pillow basalts. There's a really round one right there. Yeah, wow. Amazing that that's fully attached, too. It's yeah. Looks like it's apt know. to Just roll off there any second. Yeah, some really stark geology here. Wow. Okay. This is where we started this whole mess. <laughs> Sorry, thank <laughs> you for your patience. So now the idea when we do big ship moves, Argus will not be, will be a little bit off from the yeah, highest point we, of the ridge, right? We just came over a ridge and there's a really nice uh, feature here as far as I can see on the kind of the way we're going. Yeah. So and, uh, this is where all the critters are on this side. Can yep. See where the current's blowing up the hill there. So do you think Argus is in a pretty good position now to do? Uh, as soon as he finishes this move, he's got another three oh, meters. Um, get it on the other side of where Herc is now, kind of? Yeah, it should yeah. It, it should get there. Close enough, and then yeah. uh, we can go back to our original uh, gotcha. what, where we're doing zero okay. four zero. That's right, yeah. So back to the question of describing a new species, um, it's a really long process. You have to um, be really thorough in comparing its morphology to what we know about all the organisms related to. So um, a lot of times you have to um, gather specimens from old collections, maybe in museums from all over the world, compare the morphology. Um, Sorry, Ryan, we have a request yeah. to look at uh, the yellow colony, I think to the left. Not sure. Does that mean this one? E or this one up here, if it's easier. Yeah. So on this particular cliff, we have a tailwind. So Go ahead. I have to uh, come sideways a bit, otherwise we'll get blown into the cliff. Okay. Understood. Uh, I can come in close, but then we got to... Yep. If I... There's another one down, if it's easier. Yeah. A weird red... Something growing in there, too. Oh. That's oh, bubblegum? Yeah. It's got a red blob from here. Really dense. Thank you. Yeah, that's much better. Thanks. Okay, Jeff. Trying to zoom in there. And species descriptions also involve a lot of molecular work. So you're often sequencing the DNA of oh, organisms. Oh, cup corals. Yay. Yeah, a couple cup Perfect. corals. This looks like a yellow black coral. So they get their name from the color of their skeleton. So under that tissue, that yellow tissue, we're seeing um, their skeleton would be a dark brown or black. Wiz Khalifa. <laughs> Pretty. These are the cup corals? Yes. But, uh, so that falls in, is it, Jeffrey? It is. As close as I can get, parked in the rocks. little lighter coloring there, maybe? I don't know. It still looks like black coral to yeah. me. Oh, what the, okay, uh, thanks. Yeah, my pleasure. What's the, uh, the red stuff there? Is that a 
coral? Or? Para, para yeah, I think those are some small recruits of bubblegum coral. Oh, yeah. Take a zoom on it. Sure. Go ahead, Jeff. No, maybe not. Oh, no, that's uh, not bubblegum coral. No, it's not. That looks like maybe a bamboo coral. We've seen a couple like that. Oh, it's hemichorallium, actually. It's hard to see without its skeleton in yeah. there. Yeah, so so thick you can't see the branches at all. And a couple squat bones off to the left. No, never mind. Is Argus still moving, Paul? Uh, no, it I stopped? think it stopped. Huh? I think it's just about stopped. All right, that zoom's good, thank you. Let's do uh, 20 at 075. Bridge, this is now. Can we do 20 meters at 075? Do you know? You can, uh, whatever way you got to spin, Paul, to take the turnout, you can do that. Uh, why don't you come up a little to take some of that slack out of the tether and then try to uh, spin around and look to the north, whichever way it takes the turns out yeah. out of the tether. Looks like there's a lot of those small bubblegum corals on that rock. What's our uh, bearing is going to be zero seven zero. It's going to be zero four five ish. Zero yeah. four five. Yeah, that looks good there. Yeah, something like that. Yep, going to come back down a little bit now. Roger. Wow. Got a huge dead colony here. Something. Wow. Look at that base. Zoom in a bit there if you want to. Killed over. Sponge? Yeah. I think that was a coral once upon a time. Yeah. I don't know. That's really weird. Huh top looks like a sponge. It's pretty crazy looking. Yeah. Zoom out just a touch to get the uh, yeah. lasers. Yeah. It's big. Uh, there was a question on how long this dive is going to last. So I know the entire dive was going to be 22 hours long. We are wide, um, and that started at 4 p.m. Yes. Hawaii Standard Time. And we'll be pulling out at 2 p.m. tomorrow, I believe. Okay, we can go uh, whatever. Let's do uh, 045, I think, gives us towards the waypoint, does it not? Uh, Twenty meters, zero four five. Oh, he's got it. All right. Thank you. Thanks, George. Can go back to our uh, point two as well. We're all happy now here now. For the moment. Bridge, can we come back down to point two knots?
Which way's uh, the sorry, sorry. Yeah, thank you. Which way's the current going tonight? It's coming up the hill there. See yeah. all the particles. Uh, okay. But I could not. I guess east to west, kind of. Yep. It might be coming towards us a little. That's Hercules floating with it now there. You can really see how steep it gets off to the right. Yeah. It plummets almost straight down to the abyss. That's where we're going. Nice, Rock uh, bottom. Nice Argus shot there, too. Yeah, you really getting a good idea how steep it is looking well, at the uh, Atalanta cam. Can drop down it now. Copy that. Par. <laughs> I'm going to drop down, too. So. Is, is, the, is the ship still moving east? Because it'll pull you. No, right? we're, no uh, okay. we're 045 now. Oh, good. Okay, thanks. Should be enough off the feature there to follow it up to uh, towards the waypoint. Perfect. Yeah, look at that Argus shot. That's awesome. Pan up a bit, Paul. Argus or tilt up Atlanta, a bit. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. Try and uh, light up the cliff again there and see what the. Uh, right now, zero four five. Let's uh, give me a chance here. We'll put in the next move and see how the feature goes here. I'm basically going to follow this feature for a ways towards the waypoint. Copy that. So we're going to try and keep Argus about that far off of the cliff so we can poke along the feature on the. Seeing some more paragorgid or hemichorallium there, and also some primnoid no, no. octocorals. Pardon? Come down. Raj. Are we able to get a zoom on this one? Absolutely. Here, go ahead, Jeff. Once you get a look down at the stock, you can see this sort of banding pattern. Interesting branching pattern, it sort of yeah. trifurcates. Should be good to push in there a bit more if you want. That's a nice shot. See where the branches part. Can't quite get That's there. so pretty. Asako would like to look at the rock face here, too. She thought she might have seen some polyps or some. Can do. Okay, can. Uh, there. Those look like cup corals, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's coming right at us. <laughs> or could we look down here? That might be what Asako is referring to. Yeah, you can zoom in there if you want, Jeff. tell what that is, although I see a little squat lobster for sure down there. Good for another 20, zero, four, five. All right, thanks for the zoom. 
Yeah, as we go along this sort of cliff, it, it would be good to keep rising up to the crest now and then as we zigzag our way, you know? Yeah, for sure. Just just so we don't miss anything Thanks, up George. on top. Oh, I see polyps over here. Uh, Nice. Gotta love the overhangs. A little bit more dense here, yeah, on this overhang. Beautiful. Possibly an Iridogorgia here. Could we zoom in on that? Sure, go ahead, Jeff. Don't know we've been seeing that species much. So it's a few dives you've done, or maybe might be Rodandogorgia. Seeing some purple, what might be Victor Gorgia there. Really nice diversity on this rock. Lots of life, yeah, totally. Very nice. Cup corals. This is my first time seeing cup corals tonight. What are the um, yellow corals named again? Those are black coral. I'm not sure the species name. Roger. And then... Push in a bit on the cup coral if you want to. Right, right. Yeah, nice. Not sure if this is Javania, the cup coral. Might get corrected in the chat. A squat lobster there. George, can you change your bearing to the north for a while? Yeah, it's come due north for 20 meters. Yeah, no, sorry, bearing. Or track, track as we're calling it, I guess. Yeah, Reg, thanks. I uh, think we're at tether limits here. What's that? I think I'm getting pulled around here. Yeah, I'll come up. This rock feature is very dramatic. Yeah, it really yeah, is. So steep. Take your auto head off for a minute. Raj, you're definitely above me at this point. Yep, I'm sorry. We're apart. Use your aft cam. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I got it too far away there. That's pretty cool. That's like the inside of a pillow basalt. You can see the different layers. What do the pillow basalts tell you about the volcano? So pillow basalts are um, 
basically formed when lava enters seawater. So often it's a subaqueous sub eruption of the volcano. And when the lava, you know, when the lava comes out of a volcano that's in the subaerial on land and in the air, the lava doesn't crystallize right away. It just flows down downhill and then slowly solidifies as it creeps downhill. Uh, underwater, because the seawater is so cold, the lava kind of quenches and crystallizes really fast. And so you get the outside um, starting to solidify while the uh, lava, the warm lava, the liquid lava is still pumping inside the, the pillow. And that's it kind of almost puffs it up like a balloon a little bit. And then you, so you get the outer layer, which would turn into rock first and then sort of an inner layer that turns into rock next and then ultimately it would die off or, or, or it would crack and then you see more almost like a tube of toothpaste squeezing out mm. w another pillow forming and another pillow forming as it kind of the injection of magma kind of keeps coming into the into the rock that's solidifying thank you so it's uh, a style of a type of lava Do uh, 10 at 315 for us now, George. Sure. Bridge, this is Nev. We request a move of 10 meters at 315. So. Come down with me, Paul. Roger. You're still uh, above me right now. Yeah. See a bunch of basket stars on that coral we just went under. Something you want to see closer there? Yeah, if we could take a look up there a little. Uh, I missed it. Where was it? Just above you. Little more. Uh, the one on the left, right? A uh, little bit higher, actually. Roger. Yeah, on the left side, over here. And up here, I guess. So, either one. collected some of this basket star on an earlier dive. So hopefully once we're back to shore, we'll be able to get a better ID on it. Interesting how those uh, pink corals kind of like form like a half rainbow facing down. Like a... Yeah, that, that probably has to do with the way that the currents interact with the topography here. So they're probably rushing up quite a bit. So the fans are maybe orienting into it a little bit. So pretty. Also, just overhangs are a good place to be because you don't get sediment accumulating on you. We like the overhangs because it means there's no sediment that will fall on, on you. Little colony of half alive, half dead sponges down there, yeah? Yeah, I wonder if some of that fell off the, that ledge. Yeah, I think I'm uh, down, we're down close to the bottom of the feature there, or this little Maybe we're not. Nope, just a ledge. I don't plex. I don't know how to pronounce that word. That first. Oh, have we seen any?
plexorids at all on the dive? I don't think we've seen plexorids today that I've noticed. Other dives, we've certainly seen them. We've collected a few. On this, on this cruise? Yes, on this expedition. Not this dive, but other dives, we've, we've collected a few, including a really interesting sort of brownish specimen. Can you uh, spin around now, Paul? Yeah, that is probably a new species. Wow. Does the placid plasticity of the lava affect the kind of formations that occur? Oh. Yeah, sure, sure. The, uh, uh, you know, you might not have enough. different lavas flow, flow differently. They have different viscosities. They have different elastic qualities. Um, yeah, it Maybe definitely not, uh, affects the structure you, of how it yeah. cools. <laughs> It could be bad. <laughs> awesome. But uh, and someone was asking about columnar uh, basalts, which are sort of a feature of how these uh, magmatic dikes get emplaced sort of underneath where the active lava flows are inside the earth as lava crystallizes or magma crystallizes. And uh, you get um, these very large features uh, called basaltic dikes, basically, and they fracture, and they fracture in a very geometric pattern. It's really cool looking. <laughs> and uh, if you ever get a chance, look up um, Devil's Tower should be all right uh, you, uh, or Devil's yeah, Post Pile, and that's a great example of columnar yeah. jointing on a basalt that should, formation. That should be high enough there. We collected some columnar basalts uh, off of, um, I think it was Johnson Atoll or uh, Howland Island last year, or a couple years ago. Really nice diversity of corals on these rock features here. I can see black there corals. It is. Devil's Tower. Beautiful, right? Totally. Bamboo corals. So, could we come in a little tighter on this one here? Yeah, right. Did Did you see the movie there, Jeff? Close Encounters of the Third Kind? Oh, classic. How does the theme song go? Uh, I, can't. <laughs> doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Push I love that movie. More, yeah. That movie's great. I can't get too When I said earlier I wanted to be an astronaut. <laughs> That's why. In movies like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Close encounter of the third kind. Yeah. So that is a dead coral being sort of overgrown by these zoanthids. Zoanthids. Interesting. I was wondering why you could come the right polyps to are so now. weird. Oh. Sorry, what was that? Come right to par, zero delta. Right. Or give me the most light. We're still kind of far apart. Right? I miss you. I miss Atalanta. Interesting yellow coral down there as well. I'm going to come up just a bit. See the ridge line here. But, uh, left or right? Or both. <laughs> uh, right. Roger. We're good for another uh, 20 north. It's like quite a bit of hemichorallium in here. Bridge, this is enough. Hemichorallium. What is that yellow? Those are crinoids. Your fave. I didn't want to say the incorrect thing, so I was like, let me just ask before I say out loud the incorrect. Can we get a zoom on this large one up here? Sure. Go ahead, Jim. Push it from there. A pretty large brittle star hanging out at the top of it. Try 
some this of this. This looks like bias. a big bamboo coil to me. Or Christ and Gorget, actually. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> Branch and Chrysogorgias trick me. Really interesting brittle star, sort of. Yeah. It's all legs tangled out up in the in breeze. It. Look at all this. Yeah, those are Stoloniferans cresting on the rock. Top left, you can see some green encrusting sponge. We collected some of that uh, the other day just enough for someone to get a DNA sequence potentially out of and tell us what it is. Yeah, that brittle star is amazing. This is like just real breathtaking, like Really dense communities on these Overhangs. steep faces, yeah. And down there, it's like very protected from. They're catching all their food from the side. Yeah. Yeah, it's valuable real estate here on this rock. for a zoom on the cup coral there. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, Jeff. It's going to be rough because I can't move the vehicle here, but I could move our super fast camera. Is that full there, is it? My favorite coral. <laughs> is the cup coral a sort of sea anemone? No, they're actually um, in the sclerotinia, which are the hard corals. So mm. they are, uh, they're related to the corals that form reefs. Mm. Um, so they're this sort of solitary looks, variety. Looks a little like an anemone, though. I know it. Like yeah, it definitely why you does. Think that. Okay. Yeah, let's keep going. We haven't we haven't made too much progress up this ridge yet. We have to try uh, to get to the next one. We're way. moving the ship all the time. It's got two meters left on a ten meter move. <laughs> no, I know. It's just I, I'm looking at where we are relative to oh, waypoint yeah. two <laughs> for an hour. We haven't gone too far. Yeah. Be one of those where the next watch comes in and says, Well, they only moved fifty <laughs> yeah. meters no, for an exactly. hour. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah. There's so Lots much to look stuff. at here, though. What bearing do you want? <sighs> Hold on, let me... Uh My sonar sweep there, and I'll let's do uh, zero four five again. Good for twenty at zero four five. You look left a little polar, my. What's happening there? I uh. Let me just reset out a heading. I don't know if it was the uh, tether or yeah, heading right, or... Right. Unless uh, you want to chase me back up. Yeah, yeah.
It's kind of the bottom here, according to an altimeter. Katashi, behind you. Follow the uh, oh, thank you. Those paws from yesterday's. Mm -hmm. We'll follow the geology up here, the rift in the rock. Another overhang. Bring your head to the right just a little for me. Yeah, to the right and look down. Well, it might uh, pop down there. There's a more prominent feature. I think you have plenty of tether, right? Yeah, I was, there's a little outcrop below me too. It might be worth a look. Can't see if there's things growing on it or not. Can't tell, can you? It looks like it goes deep. Um, uh, okay, you can look back up again. I don't see any big fans there. Oh, really interesting topography and life everywhere. Interesting how we went from those pillow and soft, for the most part, rock texture, and now we've got this yeah. real... Very rough. lumpy. Yeah. Yeah, this could be a different type of rock. I, I'm not really sure. It could be more... Uh, Debris, debris, consolidated debris from the eruption. You're right um, up against the rock on your uh, left side there, Dan. Yep. And we'll, uh, we'll follow it at a 45 here and come up to the top. almost right on top of you, so I'm coming up pretty fast. Oh, you're all right. You're 10 meters away. Perfect. I'm watching the wall in Argus there, so you're close to the top of it, which is where you want to be. Yeah. Now you're above it, right? No sun I return. Yeah. Try and stay a little to the north of you. Oh, are you looking down now, are you? Yeah. Oh, sorry, I see. So are these seamounts geologically young, or you know, is the erosion process underwater very different than what we see on land? Um, they're not very young. You mean the age of the, what we're looking at, the rock? Yeah, is yeah. quite old, no, millions and millions of years old. So, we're looking at different, you know, hundreds of thousands of years of evolution of a volcano, sort of, uh, lava flows after lava flows on top of old lava flows, and, um, you know, there is definitely some erosion and tectonics here, too, so this whole side of the cliff may have given way at one point. You get these massive uh, landslides on, on steep volcanic terrain sometimes that, 
you know, break apart the entire side of the mountain. Sometimes wow. there's other eruptions that occur when that happens. Looks like a call of a fakus glass sponge there. We saw a few of those towards the What's beginning that? of the dive. Sorry, what was that? I was looking at the nav screen. What do you you want to see the sponge closer? Oh no, it's okay. I was just sort oh, of sorry. pointing it out. What um, what is the name of that red coral that we're seeing there? I feel like we're seeing a lot of it kind of just sparsed throughout. Yeah, that looks like a, a small Paragorgia bubblegum coral. A small Paragorgia bubblegum coral. My second favorite coral. You ready for another move, Den? Uh, not quite yet. I'm uh, trying to work out uh, which way we should go. It's not readily apparent yet. <laughs> I need to get a sonar shot of the... One, our, one of our viewers are, is really enjoying the Atalanta to Herc view tonight. Yeah, really, the Bring topography the looks really, really cool in the Atalanta cam. He's, um, well, maybe we can uh, push in on the Atalanta view for oh, that for a little just, bit. Just it'll just <laughs> tip over. Uh, the, yeah. Well, you can try it, but it will go in and out of the... I was thinking a quick shot. That's perfect right yeah. there. You can see the, uh, the ship heave moves Atalanta quite a lot. Ship heave movements. I needed to say that slowly for my brain to comprehend. <laughs> it's a nice little tongue twister. Let's, uh, let's try 20 at 045 again. So if you didn't know what heave means, it's when the boat goes up and down due to the waves. Bridge, this is Nev. Do you have a look at uh, Grafana? Can we get 20 meters at 045, please? Say again? If you look at the Grafana Argus depth graph. Look how perfect that is. This sort of sinusoidal curve. Oh yeah, you can really tell. Of the ship's See the heave over time. It's the Argus depth over time. It's going up and down as the ship heaves. Mm -hmm. You can even see it, uh, like how many times per minute it heaves. It's like the period of the waves, you know? Period of the swell. Can you help me get there? <laughs> what he's looking at. Is that another tab, perhaps? Um. I'm in the science log. I think it's a different page. Look for something that says Argus depth. Yeah, it's been like that for a while. I asked about it too. <laughs> hmm. Well, that was uh, Herc at the top there. First. Just gonna drop down again. fan down below us there. There we go, I found it. <laughs> oh, just like a another or cliff that we're kind of like making a turn on over here. 
So when you have plenty of tether to work with, Spot. it would be good to also go back up to the top of the feature at times. Yeah, I was just at the top there. If you look at the at the depth history there, that was us at the top. I oh, was it? it. I, oh, I thought we had it. I thought we had farther to go. No, nope. oh, I okay. peeked my peeked my head over the top and then. Uh, oh, gotcha. Spotted the white thing off. It's a pretty the, narrow ridge the then, distance. isn't it? Wow. I came back down and I'll look. See what this big sponge. Pretty big. What's that was? dark thing on the center bottom? This? Can you uh, yeah. come, come down just a bit, Paul, or look down? Or is that yeah, just rocks? Come down, five. It's, there's, uh, there's an animal living in there somewhere. Just looks like there might be a crinoid yeah, under there, yeah, but yeah. other than that, it looks rocky. I see. I'm not sure how much I can chase you coming down, though. Yeah, just give me enough of a rear to yeah, park yeah. the vehicle on the wall here. Really impressive glass sponge here. Look at how big the base is on on the attached side. Yeah. Wow. I would say that is girthy. Girthy. Uh, do ten meters east, please. Almost looks like a turkey waddle under it there. Bridge snap. Mm -hmm. 10 meters east, please. It's ginormous. Yeah, really, really huge. Only imagine how the volume of water gets pumped through there. Yeah. It's a great photogrammetry one. We're getting a If we had opposing cameras that were both <laughs> high definition. Would any sea life be fossilized when buried by lava? If it's not completely incinerated, I guess. It could come up a bit now, Paul. But Gosh. potentially, I suppose. I think Val was saying they sometimes That's good. see a shell of the odd shell or two. Whoa, looks like it got like a big scrape out of the bottom there. Yeah, interesting. Wow. Crinoid down at the bottom there. Yep. I'll come up for it. How many rocks do we have? We have one from Beth uh, from the very beginning, and then one from Beth, two from Val. Oh, three from Val. Yeah. Oh, there are three in there. Yeah. Just okay. two in one box. Gotcha. Surface much more bumpy over here. Again, I feel like you can kind of see those layers of that lava coming through. It's a small world after all. <laughs> this little Carl is so cute. Lots of little Carls. Hey, maybe take a look over here. There's something greenish looking over there. Right. It's to uh, 20 meters, zero, six, zero. Bridge, this is Nev. 20 meters, zero, six, zero. Sorry, what, what do you want to say? Right in on this coral. I could zoom in, Jeff. Huh. It's line. It's line? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. 
and made. I'll zoom in a bit tighter if you want. Yeah, it's not a green you typically see in animals. Yeah, that's yeah. filament. Interesting. Stay. Haven't seen much trash. No. Right above it is a branching come up a bit. Walteria sponge. Along with some chrysogorgids and a bubblegum coral with some brittle star on it. Did you name that really, that coral that seems to be dead towards the, the base of it with that crinoid on the very tip of it? What was the name of that one? That's a, a glass sponge called Walteria. Walteria glass sponge. This journal I have is about to be filled like as if I'm back at university <laughs> taking a course. Seems like seems like there's another colony down there that's filled up that that ledge. Nano screen is not making sense to me. There's no way I'm to the south of Argus. Eh? I was Maybe just saying, something? something doesn't seem right in the nav. Something is not right. Well, you're not getting good DVL fixes, are you? No, but those are USBL. The smear is a USBL. Oh. But you could be to the south because I'm Argus no. is uh, facing close to due east. This wall is probably having some acoustic effect on the USBL or something. Must be. There's a young scientist somewhere in New Zealand saying, I don't want to go to bed because I really should stay up for the whole dive. Just in case I want to be an ROV pilot when I grow up. <laughs> you can sleep, sleep any time. Zero nine zero. Prish, this is Nev. Uh, Twenty at zero nine zero. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that sleep is very important, rest is important, no, for and sure. that you guys can tune back in at another time to see all our highlights. And uh, when you wake up, we'll be still here diving away. And there's replay on YouTube too. So oh yeah. Don't worry, you're not gonna miss anything. Caffeine is your friend. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're lucky we have three watches, so we actually get to sleep. You able to come down five, Paul? Big yeah. upside down garden here. Yeah. It shows this uh, that the usual current is like an updraft sending up from the bottom. Wow, these upside down ones are so cool. Highlight upside down garden. That puts me at like eight meters altitude. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. Look at that. Don't hit it. <laughs> Not been able to put Atlanta where we need it all night, so sorry about that. North of you, it does uh, flatten out a bit. Yeah. I mean, I, I love this wall, I do but too. If, we, if we want to uh, 
get into some flatter stuff. That might be the call. Do we want to, or do we? Well, we have to. We have to peek at it now and then to see what's up there biologically, really. Yeah, right. Can we take a peek at this sponge, though? I don't think we've seen anything like that. I was totally eyeing that out, like, whoa, what is it that? It kind of looks like it's overgrowing a coral stalk or something. It's probably yeah. not what you want, Dwight, but we do get some view of the top of this That's, ridge yeah, uh, you're right. from Atalanta. We yeah. don't see a whole lot of It's pretty barren up looking. there. Yeah. Atalanta's on the wrong side of it again. <laughs> okay, Jeff, go ahead and <laughs> zoom in there. Dan's basically guessing what the angle of this wall is going to be and then calling that out in the ship moves. Well, yeah, it's the contour map guessing. isn't very helpful, is it? Well, I'm using the sonar. Yeah. It's, just, it's not going where we, this sponge where is we want it. Like, really I interesting. I'm trying now. to see what's going on internally, sort of near the bottom. Is that like a coral skeleton inside? or Yeah, it, it looks like it might be like a... A bamboo coral skeleton or something. Or it could be just part of the sponge itself. I, c I can't really tell. That full zoom, is it, Jeff? Yeah? Interesting. Close yeah, zoom. really cool. Maybe. I have enough tether. A lot of hydroids growing off of it. Maybe arborescent foraminifera. Hard to tell. Very interesting texture. Yeah, it really is. It's reminding me of a dinosaur skin. <laughs> All right, thanks for the zoom. I think Chris Kelly will be really interested in this one. Yeah, see, the, the base of it almost looks like a coral hold fast. Yeah. Huh. Look at that view straight down into yeah. that ridge there. Yeah. It's like a, a va. -a. Yeah. Looks like maybe a Staropathies black coral there, the yellow one. Staropathies. It'd be really cool to climb this. Yeah, yeah I was right. thinking the same thing. <laughs> Rock climbing heaven, right? Yeah. Maybe in the future we'll have underwater rock climbing. <laughs> I mean, the texture just seems so different from what, you know, I've seen of mountains and rocks on land. Yeah. Tell me what that very uh, red thing is. That is a Brazingid Sorry, sea 20 star. Sorry, 20060. Brazingid sea star. Some people say Brazingid. I'm not sure which, sure which is right. You come up a few pump if you want. Raj. Pop back up to the top here. Following the crevasse. Crevasse. One of our viewers noted that they're making their own animal guide with screenshots from the expedition. Nice. If you're not quite so ambitious, you can go to the NOAA Ocean Explorer website, and they have a benthic animal guide on there where you can look up lots of different animals and try and figure out what we're seeing down here. Kind of a uh, top ish. Of yeah, the you're getting up there. Yeah.
thinking about a rock sample. Oh, yeah. Paul hasn't gotten a chance to use the <laughs> manipulator yet this time. <laughs> this watch. <laughs> yeah, there's been twice that uh, Ryan said, oh, you know, that's an interesting looking sponge or coral. And, <laughs> and I'm like, is that crowded. on the wish list? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Reaching for the controller. <laughs> Does anyone know if the accidental sponge or coral sample made it from from yesterday, the one that was on the front porch? It did not. Oh. I think we, uh, after this watch, I think we saw it fly off at one point mm -hmm. when we were off bottom. It's interesting. I think you're right that the more diversity is down, the more sort of animal life is down to down yeah. on the absolutely cliff but this is sort of flattening out a little bit here yeah we could jump back down there if you want yeah so falls off again to our right here oh yeah see the that's where we there it is, yeah. That's where we came up. Here's a question from the crowd. How did you all land this awesome job? That's where I really am. See the blue dots there? I think that's more more better. Got lucky. Yeah, had a few <laughs> yeah, hits. Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> no, a lot of hard here. work uh, being dedicated to our Another 20, zero. careers in oceanography. Zero, and, four, uh, five. You get opportunities like this. It's great. Thank you. Um, most of the work, certainly in deep submergence, which is sort of all of our special s specialties. Um, it's working with ships and working with vehicles like this. So this is our niche, you know, and what we do. And the path we we chose. And uh, I think we can all say that we, we love our job, and we, so we stick with it. Mm -hmm. And we're dedicated, and so we get invited back, which is great. And, and now would be the perfect time to plug the intern program, internship program. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and how was it going through the intern program, Paul? Was it, was it like difficult or easy? Or uh, did it you have to take a test? You mean just applying or? Uh, no, to get from like applying to actually on board. So uh, there was, you know, an interview stage. Um, Coming out as an intern, though, was, was great. I mean, <laughs> I didn't have any kind of deep sea experience before my first Nautilus Live or Nautilus internship. Um, just a lot of robotics and engineering. Uh, and it's kind of very much one of those things where you just get thrown into it, and there's a lot of people to ask questions to, um, a lot of, like, patient watch and learn. Um, but, yeah. It's so hands-on and, and uh, very, very applied, which I really appreciate. Awesome. How does the increased water pressure affect the deep volcanic eruptions? That's an interesting question. Yeah, good question. Um, I'm, no, I'm not an expert with that. Uh, by any means. Most of the volcanic eruptions are closer to the surface that, that I know about. There are deep ones that occur at uh, mid-ocean ridge systems, and they're much different than the type of eruptions that happen at volcanic islands. Um, and part of that is due to pressure, but a lot of it is mo more due to the different sort of tectonic or volcanic environment mid-ocean ridges erupt um, like large fissure eruptions and, and uh, the magma chamber beneath 
the volcanic edifice is different from what the magma chamber is like under a terrestrial volcano or a seamount volcano or volcanic island. So I, I, su I suspect pressure has something to do with, you know, regulating the volume of material that can, you know, pour out the side of a, a of a seamount or a volcanic island. I'll but I don't really the know. Top there for you, Paul. Ratch. There's a feature that's sticking out about to stab you there. Yeah. Temperature may have more of a control over the way the melts crisp crystallize and turn into rock. Mm. You're good now. You're 10 meters away from it. Okay. Um, so many questions. I'll just go at it. What has been the most surprising thing, animal or otherwise, that you've encountered on a dive? The most surprising thing? Yes. Um, well, I would I would have to say, you know, not not no, like shipwrecks are incredible, but we're often looking for them, so they're not necessarily surprising. <laughs> but they're but they're uh, interesting for sure. I would say so we are often surprised by discoveries like w whale falls or or like the octopus garden, you know, just things that were unexpected. And um, I, don't, I can't really say we've seen too many things that were unexpected on these dives, but we're certainly seeing some cool diversity. And uh, that bir the brittle star on that paragorgia the other day was pretty surprising. Yeah, that was surprising to me. I've never seen anything like that. Um, what else have I seen? I've seen a sea lion skeleton found in a a fjord in British Columbia. That was pretty Still, uh, pretty cool. Hey, watch out for that clip. Uh, Twenty to the east. Yeah, that's unexpected. <laughs> you, yeah. you don't plan to see something like that. Bridge, this is not. We saw some fossilized uh, dolphin bones uh, in oh, wow. in rock, actually, on a seamount in the Mediterranean. Wow, that was pretty surprising. Would you characterize your interests primarily as environmental, uh, conservation, commercial, peer education, or research? Um, all of the above minus commercial for me. Yeah, pretty much the same. Probably more on the research side than yeah. environmental. Think Herc will fit in the crack? <laughs> <laughs> if you s turn sideways, maybe, like Star Wars? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a box. <laughs> uh, I can't see there. You got any down? But is one side Do of the I box have any down? thinner? Any down uh, yeah, I have a little bit. Yeah. Shall I read this one? I sometimes have a hard time buying through these, filtering through these comments and questions. Have you ever gotten any animal visitors at the surface by the ship, like dolphins or whales? Yeah, of course, all the time. Dolphins, certainly, especially when we're off California. We'll wake up in the morning and there'll be a pod of dolphin out there just playing. Yeah, they like to swim swim off the bow of the ship often yeah. when we're underway. I haven't seen any this trip, though. Mm -mm. Off Southern California or Central California, sea lions are everywhere. Yeah. Mm. We, had a, we had a crewmate who just, she went absolutely crazy whenever there were dolphins. <laughs> yeah. She just, every morning she'd wake up looking for the dolphins. Oh, and she'd God. find them and she'd love them, so. Go rushing out of the galley. Yeah, come rushing out of the galley. Dolphin. Dolphins, dolphins. <laughs> Say dolphin and then look out. Yeah, yeah, she came running. <laughs> that was great.
little plateau here. Yeah. It's, yeah. Seeing a lot of what looks like dead glass sponge here. I've seen a few dead bamboo corals as well, sort of similar to maybe what we were seeing last night with a lot of exposed skeleton. Maybe due to the high currents. Yeah, I'm pinned to try to get into it. Are those all little cup corals? Yep. Yeah. Dotted all over the place. Yeah, there's a lot of them. Huh. Something to swim by your brow? Yeah, I saw a shadow. Jelly or something? The Kraken. That's <laughs> <laughs> what's been eating all the corals. Look at that. Lots of Brazingid sea stars over here. I favor that pink color here. I've never seen so many cup corals in one place. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's crazy. That's yeah, that's wild. They tend to cluster, really, too. They're kind of like spread out here, which I've never seen before. I'll bet you at the bottom there's uh Well, we did see one similar, and then at the bottom there was just like piles and piles of... where they had grown and fallen off the rocks. Like scoopable piles. Straight down now, are you, Paul? Yeah, I was about to say, I think DVL's uh, off again. Uh, yeah, it's because we're on the side of the cliff. It's getting some. Uh, what evidence led you folks to believe these seamounts originated south, south at the Marquesas hotspot? Do you think these are much older than the Hawaiian archipelago, trying to conceptualize the movement of the Pacific Plate? with this new info, would it have been moving more in a northern direction? Question from the crowd. Yes, uh, there's been some research done that have traced the, the hot spot. The, the way those seamounts line up in a kind of line, you can um, draw kind of an arc through, the, through that line and you can um, try to trace it back to where its origin might be based on what we know about current plate movements. And so they, they tend to line up with hot spots that are, that are far, much farther south. And um, meaning, and there's been some rocks that have been dredged from some of these seamounts um, years ago. Uh, and we have kind of crummy age dates on them, but they're, they're I forget, something like between 70 and 100 million years old. So that would place them much older than the Hawaiian, the, the rocks of the Hawaiian Ridge. And in order to explain that, the, the best explanation is that they originated from a much different area of the Pacific Ocean. And there's been some papers published that have traced a bunch of these hotspot trails back to different hotspots. I can come down a little bit, right? I think the sonar looks safe. I'm right under you, I think so. Awesome, thank you. I can try and uh, see if I can come out from underneath you on that. Do you know what kind of right rocks the coral are growing range. on? So these are all basaltic rocks they're growing on? Yep, yep. Well, definitely basaltic, um, volcanic rock origins. Which makes a great hard substrate for corals and sponges and other organisms to live on because they typically can't live in or attach to soft sediment. So environments like this are a great place um, to study coral diversity. Okay, I'll come up there. Raj.
I'm thinking it's time to look for a rock to collect. We try to collect one about every 500 meters along the transect uh, to kind of characterize the different rock types that we see or uh, different lithologies, different geologic formations. Let's move uh, north. Yeah. Right. Again, it. <laughs> Bridge, this is Nev. Uh, 20 meters north, please. You guys got have good tracking now on the nav? Negative. No. Oh, well, now we're getting some hits. A little better? Definitely. Uh, well, yeah. when I came up to the top of the cliff there. Yeah. Now we're, we're up here. Yeah, yeah. Now we're up there. When we have uh, both Atlanta and Hercules on the side there, we don't, yeah, we don't get yep. very over there. So we don't have to go out of our way to necessarily to look for a rock sample, but just as we're doing our normal exploration, if you oh. see something that's about the right size uh, and grabbable, uh, let's go for it. Right there. Some serious breeze there coming over the top of that. Yeah. Cliff. Do you want to look to the north, north there? Am I yeah, going? here's some. You can come down, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Come right down. still at limits though. Yeah, if you come down, you got 20, some 25 meters under you. And he is moving north. So. You want the next move to be northwest? Um, sure. Yeah, we want to go that way. <laughs> okay. Are the ROV pilot's skills transferable to rovers used in space exploration? Good question. No. We, <laughs> well, some, in some ways, definitely. But uh, uh, in space, we don't do teleoperation usually because there's such a long time delay. So this kind of um, exploration relies on fiber optic uh, really quick. Are we OK with that yep. ledge coming uh, up? Yep. We are ready for craft? Yeah, ready for craft. Oh, no comms. It's going to be a, a long reach down. Parked on the back of the vehicle there, so I don't know if you'll be able to reach down far enough and give it a try. Yeah, just, all right, just got comms. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, any one of these in particular that we're kind of looking for? Uh. Yeah, n uh, cantaloupe size or, or smaller softball size would be good. Um, how about... Are we drifting, Dan? Yeah, we are. See where Herc is parked? It's kind of... Yeah. It's parked on its tail. Not a very good parking job. <laughs> like half on and off the curb, we're rolling over. Pitch eight degrees and roll four degrees. I don't 
think I can reach those. Yeah, that might, might have to come around how we, there. How are we labeling? If you want to tuck it in a bit, I'll just... So if this is I got enough six leash nine. now to get, oh, wait, get where we need to be. Oh, six nine. Oh, seven zero. <laughs> yeah. So do I need uh, NA or just 070? Pull your arm up a little so I don't smack it on the rocks there. Let's do, uh, while we're getting the rock, let's do 20 meters north. Bridge, this is Nev. That's on there. 20 meters north, please. How's this one? Uh, sorry. Didn't see. I was the, uh, looking at my log sheet here. This one? Yeah. If you time it right, you can get shrimp too. <laughs> the shrimp's attacking. Ooh, I did not get as good a grip as I thought I did. Just on one of these two back here. Should be good though. I don't know what I did here to this thing. Not doing anything. Do we want to zoom in a little bit? Please. Laser's nice. We're gonna lose the lasers as we. That's uh, okay. Yeah, try to get the whole. Yeah. Hold. Little brittle star on there. All right, looks good. Great. Uh, where's this one going? It can go in starboard. Um, if you can get it into C or D, great. All right. Is there any uh, floaty bits in C or D? Uh, no, just rocks. Just rocks. Zoom in there if you want, Jeff, on the mushroom crop. Oh, one in D? One in D, sorry, yeah. Is that all right? He, he did say C or D. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> I had already written in C, though. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I had a good lineup for D and thought I might as well uh, <laughs> no, fill yeah, up the I, for far no, one. No, you were good. That was fine. But Is there an op? See what the... Uh, I think I logged it okay, but... Dive. Um, I got Salvo. lots of captures. I got... I logged the sample 0, 070, is that right? Yep, that's right. Okay. Is there an opportunity for business school graduates to get a job in this field? <laughs> yeah, one of the uh, one of the guys I worked for for years was a MBA. Yes, business school graduates, definitely. Join the team, apply at the website. There's some information there. 
What are some creatures you wish to come across every time you dive? Oh, wow. Um, vertical cliffs. <laughs> yeah. Giant squid. Dwight just said skill sharks. Okay, we can do that uh, zero four five now. Okay. For me, we're we're coming across them. It's the corals for me. What's up? Wait, I'll take that zero four five now. Okay. It's always the, the things uh, you expect bridge, the least this is that are most interesting. There was a week request. Twenty meters zero four five, please. Could we get the high pack on channel three by chance? I just put it there. Awesome. You read you read the comment before I said yes, it out. I, I saw the comment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so the I high pack screen on channel three shows on the that. contours of the feature the that we're diving bigger. on. Those are ten meter contours. Zero four five will get us there. So you can see how many contour lines there are. Mm -hmm. So it's an incredibly steep uh, ridge that we're traversing across here, dropping down hundreds of meters on yeah, either side. Somewhere. Got any down there, Paul? I'm gonna come around and jump. I will say we haven't here. seen any octopus this expedition I know, yet, so not I'm, at all. I'm, I'm waiting for that. We've all been I channeling know. octopus. It's funny. Sometimes you see them all the time, and Others you never see them. <laughs> Haven't seen too many jellies either. That's true, yeah. There was that one, I don't know if you saw it, that Tina 4 that came right up to the camera and sort of uh, put on a light it. show, but. Yeah. I'm going to, uh, I can't quite lateral there. I'm going to fly out, jump off, and turn around. What was your favorite area you've explored? Favorite area, huh? Kind of partial to the to the hydrothermal vent systems. We did a project uh, five or six years ago in Mexico in the um, Sea of Cortez and Guaymas Basin, and uh, there's a bunch of hydrothermal vents there. And then in south of it was an area called Pescadero Basin, and that was really cool too. So that was one of my favorites. Lots of tube worms, big giant vent structures, hot fluids. Um, yeah, I can't believe that stuff is in the Gulf of Mexico. That was Sea of Cortez. Oh, Sea of Cortez. So. Yeah. Kind of where the Baja Peninsula separates from um, the rest of mainland Mexico. I got to do a little bit of work in some fjords in British Columbia, and that's super nice because you're climbing a lot of wall features, like sort of like what we're climbing today, a lot of vertical relief, um, which are really abundant life, lots of glass sponges out there. And also the sea state's really calm when you're in the fjord and nice scenery off the, the deck of the boat. So there's <laughs> really nothing to complain about on that cruise. Herc doesn't have enough jam to get out there. <laughs> We're caught right in the, uh, right where the current comes over the top of the cliff. Let me try again. I have to fly out in the blue water here and turn around and come down and turn around. How shallow is the end of the dive? I think 1,300, I think. Yeah. About 1,300. 1250. Huh? No, 1350, sorry. Yep. 1350 meters, 1350 meters. Thank you. Do you have a simulator to practice using the arm and general maneuvers, or do you have to learn in the job? Can we do uh, 20 meters east now? Earlier today, the simulator was, in fact, the deck of Nautilus. Uh -huh. Probably Next best question. to. Learn it on the job, yeah. Yeah. Earlier today, Paul was was up here with the arm, and Dan was down putting up a little obstacle course and things for him to pick up and move around and 
stuff. Did you get a simulated push core? <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> yeah. Wow, look this at all the really colors here. Pretty. Yeah, it was the current was so strong there, Herc wouldn't uh, lateral over. I had to fly out, turn around. Just right at the top of the cliff. Was, oh, so I'm, was, I'm glad you did. Zing it. It's funny, you get below the top of the cliff and it's uh, easy money. Uh, no, I just wanted to move him east to get uh, Atlanta out over the deep water here. Paul's right on top of the cliff there, it's on the wrong side. Do you guys sometimes use a grabber tool called the Toilet Brush of Science, T-B-O-S, like O-N-C in British Columbia does? Happy yeah. exploring. We definitely have the T-B-O-S. <laughs> we have several hanging on the walls in the hangar there. I don't think I'll ask what that's used <laughs> for. <laughs> I was waiting for someone to do it. Uh, one of the funnest things we do with it is there's a little uh, Benthic crawler that, uh, you know, he's been all over. He's been in Oregon and up in uh, Canada. I'm not sure where he is now, but he basically lives on the uh, cable observatory, and crawls around and sniffs uh, methane. Is that Wally? Yeah, Wally. So Wally's camera gets uh, overgrown with uh, marine debris, so we go down with the TBOS and give him a little car wash. Oh, wow. Give him a scrub job. It's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> It's a lot of fun because they usually have the camera up and a lot of times we'll have it uh, broadcast in the control room while we're, so we're sitting there scrubbing a the camera that, <laughs> that we're looking at. It's quite entertaining. Are there any deep sea nudibranchs? That's a good question. Um, I really don't know the depth limits of nudibranchs. So those are sort of um, sea slugs. I believe there are. I think there are. They're pretty yeah. rare, though. Yeah. Not something we come across a ton, but I, I believe there are. I heard that word a lot two years ago. Uh, so, <laughs> there must have been some. <laughs> yes. Do we have onboard psychologists? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Yeah, about 45 of them. <laughs> <laughs> if you could explore one famous shipwreck, which one would you explore? I'm not too up on my shipwrecks, really. I don't know. You know, I've been waiting to see more footage from their discovery of the Endurance. Uh, that wasn't too long ago, last month. Um, I just saw a couple of shots, but that's got to be a pretty, pretty You're cool. You're looking straight down, are you, Paul? Cool yeah. shipwreck to explore. I can spin around and get you in view, but I don't know oh, where you're look going. Look at the next, uh, so. unusual place for a. Yeah, that mushroom coral are you looking at, Dan? Yeah. Yeah, it's a big one too. Zoom in there, Jeff. I uh, believe that's a heteropolypus. Ah. Uh, Current's getting me. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Uh, so I just got blown into the cliff. Chunks of something. Sponge. I don't think it was rock. You would think sitting behind those, way under there and behind a bunch of corals, it wouldn't be getting enough food, but it certainly looks happy. Can you, uh, you can come down, Paul. Come yeah, right yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. Should be out down. over blue water now. Looks like a little. 
little bit of bubblegum coil off to the right of it. See down with that live. Uh, no, let's go. Uh, I think uh, zero four five. Let's see if I can get out of here and see what it looks like. Rich, this is Nev. Uh, can we get twenty meters at forty five, please? Will there be an Easter egg hunt on the ship tomorrow? I think there was depend the rock I hit. depends on how tired everyone is. <laughs> Rumor has it. I saw some eggs. Uh, aside from the corals, stars, anemones, and squat lobsters we've seen, is there anything else that typically typically lives down here? There is a lot that lives down here. Everything from microbes, sharks, and everything in between. Uh, the the Pokemon fish we saw yesterday. Yeah, Chanacops. 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 Yeah. <laughs> cool. Let's the yawning Chanacops. The yawning Chanacops. Wasn't impressed. <laughs> Are we going to go on the west side of the ridge at all? With this current, there will be a fair amount of life on the back side where there's a backflow and, and a curl over. I think we're generally going uh, 045 towards the waypoint. Yep. Yeah, we can get to the other side probably as we get more up on top of the feature and away from the cliff. Yeah, that's. I think that's the top right there. Thank you. Can you get the porch light, Paul? Wishing I was on the other side a few times. So yeah. The backflow currents up more, and you know, the ROVs facing into it instead of getting blown into the into the rocks there. What is your deepest dive? What was your deepest dive, perhaps? Six thousand. Whoa. With Hercules. 3,998. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take it right to the edge? <laughs> Probably not quite. Um, but I think it was more than 3,900 meters. We got That's Titanic. Oh, yeah. Wow. 2004, before Nautilus days, we were there in the Ron Brown. I didn't know Hercules has been to Titanic. Yeah. Wow. It was that cruise that um, the bosun from the Ron Brown carved us the tiki, really? tiki doll. Yeah, wow. tiki. Yeah. It should be good to come down there, Paul. Copy that. Is it just random wood or Titanic wood? Uh -huh. uh, it was wood he had on the boat. No, we weren't allowed to take anything from Titanic. Uh -huh. How? Do All the wood was gone. Actually, there was no wood to be found. No, oh. eaten away. Let's do uh, 20 meters north now. How do you Rich, this is now. get the crane wire on top? 20 meters north, please. Okay. <laughs> How do you get the crane wire on top, the top, onto the top of Herc without having to swim? Well, the, that's what the daisy chain is. It's it's the lift line is wrapped around the is sistered to the tether and tied in place. 
so we can detach it from Argus and hook it up to the crane. So if you look at the Argus view, you'll actually see that there's um, like two other ropes actually tied around that uh, the yellow tether. Um, so the trick is that it's just always attached to the top of her. And once Argus is back up on deck, we uh, undo that daisy chain. Perfect. Brilliant, right? <laughs> Don't have to send a swimmer. <laughs> And as we're being reminded, Argus is on the back deck. <laughs> <laughs> so you know what I mean. Never gets old. We're nope. seeing a Bolasoma sponge here, but unlike the ones we've been seeing pretty frequently on this too. expedition, this one is uh, the yellow morph, which, Looks according like the to the guide, tether. is a different species. Wow. White is species A. This is Bolasoma species B. Looks like there's some... Um, there's brittle stars like in it, with yeah. just their arms sticking out. <laughs> Get around it. It's a very bright yellow uh, yeah. stalk too, huh? It's like glowing. Is it on Chris's hit list? I don't think so. What is the largest organi organism you guys encountered at the ocean floor? Probably some of these glass sponges are the largest I've seen. They can be a, over a meter in size. Oh. For me, it was the, uh, the whale fall, but that was no longer living. Yeah, that was an amazing find. Some of these, like siphonophores and jellyfish, are uh, really long. I don't know if they'd be considered largest, but lengthy. Longest, probably. Longest, yeah. The sperm whale that visited Herc in the Gulf of Mexico is probably certainly the biggest mammal. Mm. Is that where that footage is from? Yeah. Yep. Gulf Mexico. Is that out with uh, Dr. Fisher, was it? Yep. Sir it was Fisher. one of those. I can't remember. It probably was. Chuck Fisher. He's right down the road from me now. It could have been one of the eco gigs with the Eric. Yeah. That's my academic lineage there. What was the reason bit, to Paul? start live streaming these expeditions? Well, for the very reason we're <laughs> using it today, it's uh, getting more people to participate so that when we're doing ocean exploration, we can bring other experts along with us to help us identify things that we're looking at, mostly. Imagine you could get one of those rocks. Awesome, <laughs> thank you. What are the beds like when you're on break? Soft. <laughs> Luxurious. The same as when we're on shift. <laughs> yeah. Calling my name. Can you look uh, zero four five for a minute, Paul? Yeah. Or just bring your head to the right. Some. We are. Do you see this comment, Jeff? That I'm highlighting. I don't know how. Yeah, I saw that. Okay. Okay. Yep. Zero four five. Yep. Twenty meters. Bridge. This is Nev. Twenty meters at zero four five, please. The short answer is that the water would attenuate it so bad, and our cameras can't pick it up. So. You can come back. Roger that. Alrighty, Thanks. thank you. <laughs> what does a fish wear to keep them warm? Sounds like a dad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on, hang on. Let's think about it. 
What was the uh, question again? What does a fish wear to keep a, um, to keep them warm? I have the answer because it's in the comment. We're all thinking about it. It's a good one. <laughs> it's going to be so obvious. <laughs> Can you look down just a bit? Or, well, I'll, I'll come up. Think, think of a, a an experienced person, an aged person. got the answers over there too. Yeah, I, I can see it. You can see that or I'm looking at Rob Nav and you guys that's like bouncing around all over the place. I can't trust it. Yeah, Rob Nav isn't going to give you much right now, so. Mm. Could you have some uh, blue dots? It's actually uh, yeah. not too far off. Oh, not too far off. Do you guys ever wonder what the deep sea fishes you saw taste like? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, come on. You're not going to give us the answer to the dad joke. Oh, do we want do we want the answer to the dad joke? I'm Please. stumped. Okay. What does a fish wear to keep him warm? A shoal. Oh, oh my gosh! gosh. <laughs> Where did we get that? Get it? Yeah. Shawl, shoal. Shawl, shoal. <laughs> How's Fiona doing? Awfully quiet over here. Just vibing. I'm enjoying the scenery right now. North then? Yeah. yeah. What's that? North? After this? North? It is nice. Um, no, I think we'll keep doing the 045s okay. if we ever want to get to that waypoint. Okay. Or, well, I don't know. What's the heading to the waypoint now? Uh, it's actually going to be 3.30 for the ship. But for, uh, but for the vehicle, it's... Uh, yeah, that's a long way. Almost north, too. Yeah. Is it really north? What's that? Where are we in the... Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you reckon, Dwight? You want to keep going around, or you want to go up and over to get to three? We're pretty close. Oh, sorry. I, my headset was off. What's up? Do you want to stay on this side of the ridge, or do you want to go up and over? Um, well, as long as we're, we're still going up on top of the ridge periodically to just see if there's anything we're missing, you know? Yeah, Raj. Yeah, let's go. We'll go, uh, All right. whatever it is to the waypoint now. Let's yeah, that's, that's fine. We can stay on top for a little bit and then drop down again. I think but, what you were referring but to. But I agree that we're definitely seeing more well, interesting but. things on the, on the cliff. Uh, let's do a uh, bridge. This is Nev. Can we do 20 sure. meters at zero, three zero, please? Great compromise, Dutch. <laughs> I'm a diplomat. <laughs> totally. Come down a minute if you want, Paul. Yeah. We'll come down and go around the corner here. glass sponge around the corner here. What's the distance to waypoint three? Uh, for the ship, we are about 100 meters, 120 meters away. The vehicles are 100 meters away.
I've got something pretty close in the, uh, what's my 20 meters per division there? Yeah, you're well inside the 20 meter range ring. <coughs> yeah. This corner's up. gonna get a little close. We get a little spicy here. It's uh, that little outcrop there. To you can come up and look down if you want, if you're getting too close. Yeah. crab in there. Oh yeah. Looks like an anemone growing off glass sponge too. Along with the bubblegum coral. Oh, and there's a sea spider on there. Oh yeah. You get a zoom on that when you have a chance. Oh yeah. Yeah, go ahead Jeff. Haven't seen many of those. No. I haven't seen any of those creepy crawlies. If I can come down a little for you. Are they related to land spiders? Maybe a silly question, but. <laughs> <laughs> they are a type of, uh, they're a type of, uh, they were, they actually are, yeah, they're um, arthropods and they're in the same sort of subphylum as really? spiders and scorpions. So it's got quite the party going on. I wonder if they're also powered by pneumatics then? Because uh, land spiders move by changing the pressure inside their legs. Right. They have that sort of fluid system. Or hydraulics. That's, that's yeah, the right, I, that's I the would right imagine word. they are. Also related to horseshoe crabs. What? Yeah, interesting. So many things are just growing right off of this glass sponge. You would think. I know. Glass would not be a great attachment substrate, but these few things have made it work. You don't see too many corals growing off a sponge. No. Or like that one. That bubblegum coral. good example of why we know corals and sponges to be so important. They create habitat for just a, such a wide variety of things. You can see that on full display here. Oh, okay. Time to go. <laughs> That's what I was talking about. Another 20? Sure. Perch, this is now. Twenty meters at zero three zero, please. That little promenade there was <laughs> trying to stab you. Yeah. I wasn't worried about my uh, depth. I was worried about surroundings. Those uh, those big rollers can, can be quite frightening. There's that yellow bolosoma morph again. You can see on the uh, Argus view just how barren it is. Yeah. Mm. Do you guys ever think about leaving a wooden chest behind just to see the next camera years come on? <laughs> what? <laughs> here's here's what here's what it says. 
you guys ever think about leaving a wooden chest behind to mess with the next camera years from now? <laughs> <laughs> Leave one for Okeanos Explorer. <laughs> hey, we've been here before. <laughs> Oh, another dad joke made it in. Oh, no. Once they start. <laughs> <laughs> Looks funny. <laughs> Let's hear it. Why does it take pirates so long to learn the alphabet? Uh, so something about R. Did it get stuck at R? <laughs> Did it get stuck at C? Yeah. Oh, hey, got it. Nice one. <laughs> that's that's a cool sponge. Yeah, that's a cool sponge. Swiss You're cheese. ready to be a father. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. What kind of sponge is this? Did we already say? Yeah, this is a uh, Bolasoma. Is the name of the genus. It's a yeah, type of glass sponge. On a previous yeah. expedition, we were calling those Dr. Seuss sponges. Yeah. Aptly named by a geologist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, someone wants to know the crew's opinion on the Masters and Tiger, the man. Huh? <laughs> we don't get TV out here. <laughs> yeah, we don't go there. Thank you. I'm gonna have to put that up. <laughs> yeah, someone's gotta inform us if something crazy happened. Don't know. Since the lights from the vehicles are so bright, do they cause any harm to the deep sea fish's eyes? This deep sea fish eye, fish's eyes. I don't know about that. Um, deep sea fish do tend to have remarkably oh, bright eyes to yeah, sort up of on the left. visualize uh, bioluminescence in the deep sea. But um, ooh, look at that current! That's so fast. I'm not sure what a what a light is necessarily doing to their eyes. Wow. Uh, I know a little bit about that. Um, I think a lot of deep sea organisms don't have much ability to sense light, just because there's not a lot of it down there. Um, and so for those, it, it wouldn't really bother them, um, especially ones that ha have uh, lost their ability to see after living there for a long, uh, many, many generations. Wow, mm. look at this sponge. But yeah, I, I wonder, for the ones who are able to detect bioluminescence, is this like super, super bright? It, yeah, it must be pretty jarring. See like little splotches of red in there. I think there are just a lot yeah. of shrimp in there maybe. Shrimp in there? Yeah. Mm. Might be my eyes playing tricks on me too, but oh, oh yeah, you can see. Does anyone have trip tryptophobia or whatever? Like the fear <laughs> of many holes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trigger warning. <laughs> Look, there's a little hand poking out of one of those holes. Oh, yeah, a little star in there. Wow. Just reaching out for deep sea cheese. Yeah. Deep sea cheese. <laughs> Bola Soma. <laughs> OK. That's a great shot. Thanks. All right, another 20. A little, little uh, riddle star. Legs poking out I everywhere. I think there's a lot in yeah. there. I, like sort of everywhere I look, my eyes settle Which in and see out. some like pink and red. Can you uh, look, bring your head left just a little? Yeah. Have you ever uh, witnessed 20 a... 20 meters north, please. Have you ever witnessed a predator catch prey on an explorative dive? Sure. Uh, just last night we saw a lot of sea stars on bamboo corals in a bring your head left a bit more if you want predation event happening it'll go um, I think 
I've been trying, but I'm not getting uh, sharks and other things. Any control Any over things? it? Oh, so got the currents blowing so hard. Let's see if I can come around in here, view. Did you have a slide in your presentation with that grouper that ate that shark? You know the one yeah, from yeah. Uh, Okeanos? Yeah. There was an incredible pretty... Uh, well, the, there's a bunch of small sharks that were munching on some dead fish, and then a <laughs> giant grouper came up and swallowed one of the sharks. I forgot about that. Whoa, that sounds intense. Yeah, it's a highlight you can look up on uh, Okeanos. How do you relax after watch when you've been concentrating on operating the ROV, for instance? Go to the mess and eat Oreos and milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that worked. <laughs> Since I've been out here, I've read all six of the Murderbot Diaries. I'm currently on the uh, three-body problem. That's your trick. Mom. Yeah, I like to read. <laughs> you to have a zoom on whatever is encrusting this rock here. Sure. I, uh, I pretty much play the Wordle, and then the Worldle, and then I go to sleep. Mmm. Ooh, Wordle's great. That's a Wordle. Okay, Jeff. I think everybody plays Wordle. <laughs> yeah. Not I. Nor what? Not I either. I've played it on someone else's phone one time. That That's about it. I don't know what we're looking at. Me neither. Yeah. Interesting. Those might be type of foraminifera, a type of single-celled organism that sometimes forms little tree-like structures, but that's just a wild guess. Crazy. Wow. Maybe hydroid? Uh, yeah, Asako, our scientist ashore, is guessing foraminifera as well, so. Really? Yeah, not hydroid, so yeah, so this is a potentially a type of single celled organism that can get quite large. One of the rare macroscopic single celled organisms. Cool, thanks. Where you see them so dense too. Question for everyone. Um, do you ever see yourself doing your jobs in a submarine in the future? Nope. No. <laughs> if anything, it's the other way around. We're starting to, we're trying to be autonomous. I'll diverge from the crowd. I could go in and sub. I would love to. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> I guess for... Uh, you didn't get one of those Alvin dives? I did get an Alvin dive, ah, so I could you. see myself doing it in the future. For sure. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, for those of us in the front seat, it's kind of a different job. If you're, uh, if you're in the Alvin, you're not also piloting an ROV. Mm -hmm. You are the ROV. You are the train. <laughs> when you put it that way, I definitely could see myself <laughs> doing that. Slap on some wheels. and he, he wants to change his answer. He wants to be a submarine. <laughs> Someone needs to Photoshop Paul's face onto Thomas the Tank Engine. <laughs> Are we uh, at tether limits or just in current here, Dan? I'm not sure. Must be tether limits. Fiona? Yeah? Submarine? No submarine for you. No submarine for me, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. I I'll think everyone here knows back. why. <laughs> come up. No, you stay there. I'll come back and uh, see if I can come under your hair. It's a bit claustrophobic. 
I dove in a submersible once, twice, well, three times, I guess. But, but it had a nice big acrylic sphere, so it was one of those with the big bubbles oh, in the front, nice. so that I could sit right up in the front. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it's an Alvin, it's very tight. I was looking at um, some submersibles online, and there's a few where you kind of have to like lie in your stomach, and your neck is at an angle the whole time. Yeah. I don't that know. I can't imagine. NR1 was like that. Yeah, that's like the one I was in. It's a. Uh, that's tough. It's a long day, but definitely worth it. Are you coming along this way now, on the other side, or you're just gonna be at the top? No, I'm okay. we're still trying to stay on the this way. Yeah. I'm gonna celebrate soon. Because we're almost at waypoint three. <laughs> hard, it was a hard fought waypoint, that's for sure. Bridge, this is now. We have a we have an hour left on our watch. We can we can I think we'll get there. Mm -hmm. uh, Twenty meters north, please. I like the I like fresh air too much to want to be in a submarine. Is there a known reason why the rims of the holes in the cheese sponge are the same dark yellow color as the stalk? That's a good question. I don't know. Maybe just the angle. You can see more of it at the rims. Yeah, maybe. It's more yellow things. Yeah, these are high in crinoids. Stocked, stocked crinoids. There's a stock up there without a crinoid to top it. Just I wonder if the stock, I don't know if the stocked ones, if the actual top can sort of eject What's itself. There, Paul? Like Is another it pulling you around? Or? I think so. How did I do that? Everything was happy for a second. Yeah, I, it's just that, I guess it's the current. Mm -hmm. Try pulling your auto head or do that trick. Are we up on top now? Sort of? Yeah, yeah. sort of, yeah. We're trying to get uh, Lancia to look to the north. And Yeah, I mean, the tether looks, we've got a good view of the tether in uh, your rear cam. And in this one. Yeah, I think Was the it current. to sort of traverse the saddle up there, the Dwight? The current yeah. is so strong. When I it's really get flat it for that. Close to yeah. stretch, it though. It might be more interesting that. Yeah. Stay on the ridge, sort of. If you hadn't ended up on Nautilus, what do you think you'd be doing? Would you still be working in a similar area or doing something really different? Well, most of us have other jobs. <laughs> right? I yeah. think the only person on board that is a staff member of Ocean Exploration Trust right now. Yeah. Or the crew. And Megan. Yeah. yeah. But Megan doesn't come out to sea all the time, so she has a job at home that keeps her very busy. Yeah, Definitely. she does. What is the current like? The fauna are moving around like a strong current is going upslope. The current is uh, really strong uh, from right to left. You see the particles zipping by at light speed. What is that thing there? That's right. a Walteria glass. I think we need a waypoint two sample, maybe. How are we looking for space? Because we're about a third of the way through the dive. No, for zoom in um, there for DNA a or a rock? <laughs> rock. Uh, pretty good on space. We still have E and F still open. And, uh, and C? C is good. Oh, that would be good 
for another 20 yep. on the whatever. Uh, I thought they wanted to get a sample. Or? Uh, we're oh, just talking about it. Okay. Uh, not necessarily. We're Bridge, this at, is nav. I don't want to load up with too many samples this early in the dive. So 20 meters at 030, please. So waypoint three is 920 meters long track. It's three. 3,300 meters is the length of the track. So we're less than a third of the way. And we've been diving for like six hours. We have another 14 to go. So yeah, so we're like a third of the way. So we should have a third of the samples. Mm. That's about right, I guess. <laughs> We don't need a sample here. We'll okay. let, let Val get her sample on the next watch. Where are you? I'm choking on my tea up here. Oh dear. Oh. So, my thought is. Well, this is. This is a really steep part of the wall still, but then it kind of really okay, broadens Jeff, you can out. Go away to get things. It's, uh, can we can we drive along the flat part for a little while? Yeah, it's not real steep in front of us. So it's kind of yeah, just like this. prove to ourselves that it's it's not that interesting, and then that'll be our justification for dropping back down along the wall. Roger. We're doing the, we've basically been doing zero three zero, which is taking us up on the top, top of it. What is that black thing down there that just went down the corner? I think that was an anemone, sort of like the one that they slurped earlier. Cool. Thanks. Do you guys have a go-to meal once an expedition is finished and um, and you're back on land? I've been watching a lot of mukbangs on this trip. <laughs> it hurts. It really does hurt. <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't thought about that. I'm going to eat spam when I get home. <laughs> they might have that here. <laughs> oh, they do? I don't know. I feel like it keeps for a long time. It is a Hawaiian delicacy, right? Yeah. More of a tradition, I think. <laughs> well, you're on for provisioning, right, Dan? Yeah. Did you see any go by? Negative. All right. Got a slime star there. Seen a few of this species Close today. Close up on that one if you want, Jeff. Is that the same sea star we saw earlier? Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> How does hold on, that's far. How does ascending and descending work? For descending, do you just let gravity do its job, or is there engines that speed it up? And for ascending, do you just pull on the winch, or is there thrusters that speed the ascension up? So there's two different vehicles, right? Um, Atalanta or Argus uh, are both really heavy. So they basically hang almost straight down from the ship, um, just hanging on that 6.8. Uh, and so the the amount of payout in that 6-8 cable is going to determine how deep Atalanta sits. Um, so for Atalanta, it's really easy. You winch, you pay out to uh, lower it, and you haul back in to raise it back up. Um, Hercules is pretty close to neutrally buoyant. We'll play around with the exact weight configuration for each dive, 
depending on you know how many rocks we might pick up, what other science equipment comes on or off. Um, but so because it's close to neutrally buoyant, um, it's uh, thrust. It's using its propellers to thrust up or down. Um, there are some other games that we play, like uh, there are those steel plates at the front. So when we pick up a bunch of rocks, we're actually adding to the mass that we have to then thrust back up. So to compensate, we'll, uh, we'll plan our neutral buoyancy with those steel plates, drop those at the bottom, and then we're still close to neutrally buoyant or slightly positive when we uh, come back up. Thank you. Another move. Bridge, this is Nev. Does the water's pH and salinity 20, change? 20 meters at zero three zero, please. Much to these dives, are there any magnetic changes, perhaps? Yeah, so the pH definitely changes as you go down in the water column. Um, there's a certain um, horizon below which you don't tend to see um, organisms that form um, skeletons made out of uh, calcium carbonate. Um, not sure exactly where that is at our location, and we don't have a pH sensor on the vehicle, um, but the pH definitely does change throughout the water column, uh, as does the salinity uh, to a lesser extent. They ask about magnet, mag magnetism as well? They did. I didn't touch the magnetism. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, it, I mean, uh, so the, the Earth's poles are not where it's like geometric or true north and south are. So depending on where you are in the world, you have to make an uh, like an adjustment um, to take account. Like I, I think the value is called the magnetic declination. And that's something um, we have to calibrate for in the magnetometer sensors in Hercus, Hercules and Argus. The rocks are slightly magnetic too. They don't really affect our um, instrumentation, but uh, when they when they crystallize, they the magnetic minerals align themselves with the Earth's magnetic field, and so there's a field of geology geophysics that looks at Earth's the history of Earth's magnetism, and you can trace it through um, the crustal rocks that crystallize that form on the ocean floor. So you can actually date, you, there is a way to date the ocean floor through the magnetic anomalies that you can measure with a magnetometer. Can we take a look over here? I'm not sure if what I'm seeing, or that might just be some pink coral now that we're getting closer. Actually, we don't need to zoom in too tight. That looks just like a bunch of hemichorallium now that we're getting closer to it. Looks like some of it broke off. Oh, that brittle star flew away. What is the strangest item you have ever found on the ocean floor? It's a good question. I know sometimes we, we see something and we zoom in and then it's just human trash, which is uh, always a bad feeling. We found a refrigerator once. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Whoa. That somebody like threw off a freighter or something, you know? <laughs> Probably stopped working. Just talk about ocean trash. On the Alvin dive I was in, we found a World War II era shell casing. Yeah. Um, 
This is an interesting uh, fire pit. Yeah. Prehistoric archaeological site. Yeah. <laughs> Wonder what something like this for. This is a very <laughs> this would go down. It's a strange find on the ocean floor if that were true. It's a strange place for a cup coral too. It's, it's <laughs> weird to see them on the top. Can you uh you wanna zoom on the cup coral? We're waiting for uh waiting for Argus. <laughs> I'm sorry, Atlanta. You like those cup corals, don't you? I do. Here you can really see the manganese coating on the rock. So. <laughs> can you give us a little bit of a refresher of what specifically is the manganese? So it's that dark, it's that, 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 it, yeah. that dark coating, that dark color that's on, just on the surface of the rock. Oh yeah, cool. Bridge, this is now. Also referred to as patina or patina. Mm. Mm -hmm. Patina. Patina, thank 20 you. meters at 030, please. Some of the high current areas, it gets really, really shiny, right? Yeah. Does the rover pilot differently at the bottom where the H2O density is higher? Sorry, can you uh, repeat the question? Does the rover pilot differently at the bottom where the H2O density is higher? Okay, Jeff, you could go away. Um, they're definitely, well, I haven't done a lot of shallow piloting, so I don't know if there's any subjective difference in the feel. Mm -hmm. I mean, what about deployments? Like when you're that little bit driving on the surface. Yeah, the uh, 